in her career in the Killington Slalom tomorrow. As far as the rest of the Stiefel U.S. Alpine team today, Schifford in 13th, Moulton, O'Brien, and Hensian scoring in the points as well. And up next, it's the Bayou Classic. And then later tonight, the National Dog Show presented by Purina at 8 Eastern. Tomorrow, we're back with more from the Alpine World Cup with the women's slalom starting at 12.30 Eastern right here on NBC. And now for Heather Cox and Steve Perino, I'm Steve Schlanger. Thanks for joining us, everyone, as we say so long from the heroic Killington Cup presented by Stiefel. There's one name that can make a can't-miss event truly sensational. Tiger. Tiger, Tiger, Tiger. A living legend tees off against his friends and rivals. The Hero World Challenge on Golf Channel and Peacock. If it's football and fun you're craving this Thanksgiving weekend, you've come to the right place. And hopefully you brought your appetite with you because you are about to get your fill of both. Coming up here live from the Caesars Superdome in New Orleans, it's the 49th Bayou Classic. And as usual, it's the showdown between Grambling and Southern, along with the halftime show of all halftime shows, featuring their world-famous marching bands serving as the perfect main course following Friday night's Battle of the Band sampler and step show appetizer. Grambling State University has a storied football tradition with head coach Hugh Jackson using his NFL pedigree to author a new chapter. The Tigers can author a satisfying end to an at times frustrating first season for Jackson with a win here in his first Bayou Classic. What started as a game between two Louisiana rivals has morphed into a statewide celebration, a Superdome spectacle in the heart of New Orleans. The Southern University Jaguars and Grambling State Tigers square off again in a match where the rivalry on the field continues to heat up when play is stopped and the music starts. Welcome to the Bayou Classic Halftime Show. For these two historic schools, it's a gridiron battle. Punctuated by the Battle of the Banks. The Southern University Human Jukebox and the Gremlin Tigers Marching Band. This Thanksgiving week institution kicks off again in the Crescent City. Gremlin and Southern take the field for the 49th annual Bayou Classic. Victory in this rivalry game, of course, brings with it bragging rights for the next 364 days. Southern and Grambling each has won 24 Bayou Classics. Today's winner can claim head-to-head -head supremacy till next year. But the stakes are even higher for Southern and first-year coach Eric Dooley because a win today and the Jaguars claim a spot in the SWAC championship game and a rematch with undefeated Jackson State and Coach Prime.
What up, fam? And welcome once again to this football family affair that is both a family reunion and a family feud. My brothers, Anthony Heron and Chris Lewis, will join us momentarily from the broadcast booth. And they know, just as I do, that few things divide people and at the same time bring them together quite like the Bayou Classic. And as a son of New Orleans, as somebody who grew up watching this game, who attended this game as a boy, who covered this game for the New Orleans Times picking you, I, who got a taste of college life as a teenager walking these streets, I can tell you firsthand what this event means to this community socially, culturally, and economically. This event is college football's version of the cookout with these two marching bands providing the soundtrack. These schools are 200 miles apart, making this the Boots Backyard Brawl. Now Hugh Jackson of Grambling steps into the ring and goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Southern for the very first time. And he is standing by live right now with a veteran of some 20 Bayou Classics, <laughs> the one and only Lewis Johnson. All right, Michael, thank you very much. All right, Coach, you bring a tremendous amount of football experience to this team. I mean, from the NFL. This is your first Bayou Classics as well, and I see you looking around and just taking in the moment. What have you uh, set in terms of expectations, especially early on, in what is a charged environment? No, this is unbelievable. I think it's awesome to have an opportunity to showcase both of these universities on live TV. There's nothing like it. Well, I never envisioned that, though. We got coaches <laughs> running out, challenging coaches and players. Right. Let's play football. All the best to you. Good luck today. Thank you so much. All right, and let's go across the field to Corey Robinson. Hey, Corey. Hey, Lewis, thank you so much. Hey, Coach Eric Dooley, uh, all week long you've talked about the magnitude of this moment. What was your message to your team in the locker room? Hey, you got an opportunity right now. The world going to see. This is, this is what we play for right here. This is why you come to Southern University. What better stage to show it at the granddaddy of them all, the Bayou Classic. Thank you, Coach. Best of luck to you. Michael? All right, the bands are already rocking the Superdome, but now let's send it over to the public address announcer. Rise, remove your hats and join in the singing of our national anthem, performed by America's Got Talent, very own Golden Buzzer winners, Chapel Heart. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud Twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets regular the bombs bursting. at the National Anthem. When you come back, Chris Lewis and Anthony Heron on the call when the 49th Bayou Classic presented by Oikos continues on NBC.
Welcome to the 49th Annual Bayou Classic, presented by Oikos. Caesar Superdome will be rowdy, grambling at Southern for the Bayou Classic. With Anthony Heron, Chris Lewis here with you. I'm ready for a party. I'm sure you're ready for a party. These teams are ready for a celebration, perhaps even more so Southern. With a win in this game, they will be in the SWAC championship game as the West Division winners. It's interesting because it always feels like the stakes can't get much higher for the Bayou Classic. But having that championship appearance on the line in Eric Dooley's first season is a magnificent opportunity for the Jags. But then, of course, like Michael Smith mentioned, on the opposing sideline, a first-year guy with all kinds of NFL pedigree in Hugh Jackson. It will be a fun matchup between the coaches. Fun playmakers in this game as well. Let's start on the Grand Lake side. Their running back, Maurice Washington, Coach Hugh Jackson said, is a straight-up blur. He is, and when you think about the fact that when they get the football in his hands, he's the main playmaker they have access to on the offense. He likes to press the hole just momentarily. Once he bounces it, he gets into the open field, though. He's as dangerous as any player in the Southwestern Athletic Conference on the opposing sideline, though, is a magnificent pass rusher. They are going to have for Southern Jordan Lewis healthy for the first time in several weeks. He's on pace right now. Not only in today's game, but if Southern wins and gets an opportunity to play next week, he may break the all-time career sacks record at the football championship subdivision. So each sideline has playmakers. And you mentioned with Jordan Lewis coming back from what was a hamstring injury that has been nagging him throughout the year. He says he's healthy and ready to go for the 49th annual Bayou Classic. As Michael Smith mentioned, not only the bragging rights, for the next 364 days, winner of this game moves ahead in the all-time series history. The first Bayou Classic for former NFL head coach Hugh Jackson on the Grambling sideline. And last year's MVP of the Bayou Classic, oh, Garrett yeah. Urban, <laughs> is set to kick off. He made five field goals in the dramatic Grambling win a season ago, including the game winner. So last year's game ended on the foot of Garrett Urban, and this season's contest will begin on the foot of the Urban legend, Garrett <laughs> Urban. You mentioned the reigning MVP with the opportunity presented to him here. Each of these teams playing some of their best football of the season as they came down the stretch in the month of November. Southern, chance at the championship game. Grambling State, opportunity to knock them off that pedestal. Let's have some fun. A 49th annual Bayou Classic. And Braylon Morgan from the two. Bitter Patterns is crushed. Wow, what a hit. As that's how this game begins with Estes delivering the punishing blow on special teams. That is the senior from East St. Louis, Illinois. Got to have your head on a swivel at all times on the football field. Braylon Morgan, very electrifying return man. I should check. That was Floyd Chalk, who's a <laughs> running back, who delivered the boom. So it's time for the Southern offense, Bashawn McCray, the redshirt sophomore from Orlando. Southern in the Navy, Grambling in the gold. First play from the scrimmage, not right down. Sundiata Anderson backs the pass from McCray, and it'll bring up second down. A chance to see the arrest of the Southern offense. When they have the football, I think up front on the offensive line, Dallas Black will have his hands full trying to set the protections and make sure they're set against this movement. They'll see all game from Graham and State defense. Well, not much movement for Kendrick Grimes on the second down run. He is met right near the line of scrimmage. Playmakers for the Jaguars. A variety of playmakers that have access to Chandler Whitfield is probably the one most elusive in the open field, but certainly Kendrick Rhymes as a running back, a young football player. This will be the most movement, the most stem he's seen versus any defense this season. First third down of the afternoon. Southern as a team, 43% on third downs, best in the swag. They won't convert this one as the out to Kendrick Rhymes gets about four and it'll be fourth down. That's big for Grambling's defense, not only because it's just a nice way to start the football game, 
But Southern came into today's game as the number one third down offense in the SWAC. And so when you can make sure you're getting them behind the chains early in the drive, then that allows Grambling State to dictate terms. So Robbins both plan for his 25th punt of the year. Donald Johnson, the returner for the Tigers. Flag before the punt. Five yard kill. Two. Fourth down. Jarvis Walker, our referee for the 49th annual Bayou Classic. Hugh Jackson certainly liking the fact. The initial penalty of the game not on his team. Each of these squads have had games where penalties have marred the potential for better performances. But Southern, the movement they're going to see from Grambling on both defense and special teams. They have to be able to hold their water up front. Low plan gets it off. Fair catch called. Johnson at the 40. So Grambling's defense holds, gives their offense first possession, good field position. Starting quarterback Julian Calvez, just a freshman, but talking to you before the game, Anthony, you said you've liked a lot of what you've seen from him. I really have. For a young football player with as much as Hugh Jackson's offense calls for, we'll see him in the shotgun, we'll see him under center, we see a lot of call movement of the launch point, and just the ball handling in the backfield is a lot to consume, but he's gotten better at it throughout the season. On first down, Washington. Bitter patters past the 40 and gains one and a half. Kelby Gibbons was the first one there. Grambling's offense, 23 points per game, about middle of the pack in the sweat. Got a few different lineups as they shuffled through the offensive line this season. It's a very talented defensive front they'll face. We've talked about Maurice Washington, but also pay attention to Lyndon Rash on the outside as a wide receiver. He's their best playmaker. Rash playing in his third Bayou Classic, a six-year senior. Washington the deep back. Coleman in motion. It's second and eight. Washington gets the carry and is wrapped up. About two yards from the line of scrimmage by Rodney Johnson Jr. Third down coming up for Grambling. So we're seeing already one of the ways that Grambling State has been able to use the bye week they have leading into the Bayou Classic. They ran some jumbo personnel prior to this, but Hugh Jackson to be able to jump start his run game, get more big bodies up front. They used a version of that there on second down. It's normally something they've gone to in short yardage scenarios. Lou Jackson knows this is a, a process to change the culture. But Grambling into a new era of excellence. On third and six, Galvez, rollout, has space, and has the first down. Slides in plus territory, late contact. No flag as McCray came flying in. First down picked up by the Tigers. Certainly worth noting because that's one where one spot where Julian Calvez is pretty effective. As he extends the play, you'll see a lot of inside pass rush moves from this defensive front of Southern. This is an opportunity he'll have to take advantage of over and over again when he sees the edge. That run pass option is what it turns into once you get out in the open space. He's able to move the chains. New Jackson told us Calvez a better runner than you would think. He is a slender listed 190. First down and plus territory. Washington mentioned he's a blur. He's also powerful inside the 35. So the Nebraska transfer, Maurice Washington, showing off his skills. He averages nearly 10 yards per carry. The main challenge for Grambling on offense as it concerns Maurice Washington has just been to keep him on the field. He's been banged up a lot throughout the season. But you see there, with his stature, he's able to crease defenses without a big rushing lane. As long as that Tigers offensive line can maintain blocks, there's going to be opportunities for Mo Washington to get into the open field. Corian Harris got taken for a ride right there. Powerful run. It's a gain of 14. Late clock at just three. Chance Williams, the running back, had to hustle to get this one off. And from the sideline, a timeout. So Hugh Jackson recognizing what was going on with Grambling late to get that play. Take a timeout. Saves the five yards with the timeout. 
Grambling got the stop. Their offense on the move at the Superdome. Boy, goes triple zero. Scrape, load, done. The 49th annual Bayou Classic brought to you by Progressive. The right call to protect your home and car. The non-stop party all weekend long. Step show, battle of the bands at the Dome yesterday. Game today, battle of the bands at halftime. Southern and Grambling. First drive for Grambling. On a first and ten rollout, the pass over the head of Lyndon Rash from the arm of Julian Calvez brings up second down. It's time to meet that Southern defense. A defense that only gives up 20 points per game. Really in all stat categories, the second best defense in the conference. And they don't have to blitz to get home with their pass for us. Jason Dumas at exceptional on the interior of both of their linebackers, Jalen Campbell and having Farmer working at the second level. On the back end, they got guys who run the alley like Corian Harris. Calvez fakes the give and keeps it himself down the sideline and picks up a couple. Corian Harris, the one to run him near the sideline and stepping out of bounds. So third down coming out, coming up. Calvez coming out. And Cortarius Hawkins enters. So we talked to Hugh Jackson before, and he said if we can, we want Calvez to go the whole way. But it is the Bayou Classic, so whatever you got to do to get the win. And each team has had a variety of quarterbacks who played significant reps for them this season. So Hawkins certainly ready for this one. Hawkins at with more pass attempts on the season than Calvez. A pass on third and eight is incomplete. Rifle through the hands of Claude Coleman. And it's fourth down and decision time for Grambling. Offense right now remaining on, but kind of hovering by the sideline. There's really three different options that would be worthy of consideration from about the 33-yard line. So you're looking at roughly a 50-yard field goal. Maybe you go for that fourth down in plus territory. It does seem to Grambling here deciding to go ahead and punt, see if they can pin that Southern offense back and play some field position. So we'll bring out Jimmy Isles. Yeah, it's one of these where you want to make sure you get it inside the 10, but not have that go into the end zone. And that 20-yard line isn't much of a change of field position. And it's a catch down at the three. And then some late pushing. <laughs> Brown wants to see a flag pop out. And Southern wants to think, hey, why don't we have a right to catch it instead of Stewart just going in and basically <laughs> boxing out Rhymes to catch it. So Myron Stewart, the one who caught the football inside the five. Look at this, just a box house. There's been some Final Fours in this building. And they got late punch as well. At Progressive, we love your pets as much as your families. I know it was 24-24. I've been a part of a lot of Bayou classes. <laughs> there's, there's no secret to that right there. And whether it was... 24 to 1. I know the magnitude of this football game. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, who's playing for something. You're playing for bragging rights for 365 days. Southern coach Eric Dooley at the opening press conference. Yeah, he knows the numbers of the Bayou Classic. Why not? Assistant at Southern for 13 years under Pete Richardson. Played at Grambling. A swag lifer. First down run to Carl Ligon. So he's an important part of this rivalry, but now for the first time getting a chance to lead Southern as the head coach. And he's been waiting for an opportunity like this for quite some time. He was a very successful assistant for a number of years. Coached as the offensive coordinator, like you referenced for Grambling State, in the Bayou Classic for some of the best offenses we've seen on display. McCray, awkward mesh point, and he is swallowed up. Lewis Matthews, one of the leading tacklers in all the FCS, makes a tackle for a loss to bring up a third and long. Matthews reads, he diagnoses so well on the move because everything that Grambling State does in their defensive front can get you out of your gap. But all the attack mode that we see GSU in their defense in, 
When you have a linebacker like Lewis able to clean it up, that's why you can have success. Junior and a very day, Louisiana, brings up a third and eight. Gray is pressured, has to get rid of it, and does. Just throws it away. It was close to being out of the tackle box. That's the announcement from our referee, Jarvis Walker. And brings up a fourth down. Reference the inside pass rush moves. You have more freedom to do that when the opponent is backed up looking for a big play. Oh, the inside pass rush from Brian Powell. They're able to beat the left tackle of Southern to the inside. Forces B. Sean McCray to evacuate the pocket. No better choice available at that point than to throw it away. So now that you have hindsight, you had Grambling deep in plus territory, decided to punt. They pin Southern back inside the five. Defense gets a stop. They have a chance for some great field position here. Playing complimentary football are the GSU Tigers. Bow plan punt. Johnson, the returner. He elects to receive it at the 40 and slithers his way to the 35. So right about the area where Grambling decided to punt the football. They'll have the football once again with a fresh set of downs to Bayou Classic. toothpaste brand in America. We've talked a lot about the rivalry and the traditions of these two programs. Let's see how they stack up. SWAC titles, HBCU national championships, so plenty on both sides. Grambling State has the slight edge, Black College Football Hall of Fame inductees, but the highlighted one at the bottom, Bayou Classic wins, all even up at 24. In a rivalry game, Gets no better than that. They compete in absolutely everything. Not just the bands, but even the mascots. <laughs> Going at it for a pull-up competition. Looking like Lewis Johnson at the gym. Wild <laughs> <laughs> Wild You're Wild not Wild lying Wild about Wild Lewis, by the way. First down coming up for Grambling. Starting to drive at the plus 35. And Washington is met right at the line of scrimmage. And brought down by Taj Brown. With the help. Of side farmer those two combined for the edge defender it's going to be a bit of a chess match throughout the day here because on that inside zone maurice washington is so effective cutting it back if you don't close down on washington then you may allow him to be able to crease you Grambling team that struggled to start the year just one and six since then they've won two of three Calvez, who's back at the quarterback spot, hesitates, accelerates, and slides inside the 30-yard line, and it brings up a third down. He's looking fairly decisive so far, and even the indecision in the pocket about not necessarily seeing a receiver he feels comfortable throwing the football to, but then immediately tucks it, gets into running mode, and he's not nearly as athletic or mobile as Cotarius Hawkins is, but he's mobile enough to move the chains, just like Hugh Jackson spoke to us about. Let's we'll see how they approach this third down and five. As a team grambling on this season, just 27% on third downs. With Washington in motion, Calvez on the keeper. He's gobbled up. That ball might have popped out. As they uncover the pile, Southern thinks it's their football. It is. The Jaguars force a turnover to the dismay of Hugh Jackson. As Calvez was going Ooh. in there, the knees may have been down initially. But the fact that as a defender, may have been Jalen Campbell going in, raking away at the football, trying to see if he can strip it out just before the ball carrier, in this case Calvez. But I do think in that moment, we're looking at the knees Certainly the right knee appears down, perhaps the left as well. Feel that the runner was not down before Fumble and Ball was under further review. Mike Davis is our replay official, and he'll get the angles that we just took a look at. And by your opinion, it looks like that knee was down. Of course, college football, you'll need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field. We just saw on the previous series where Hugh Jackson, with a, a fourth down opportunity, decided to punt the football. He was able to pin Southern back. His special teams executed really well for him. So this could be a really big turn of events. Calvez, it appears to me that right knee is down before he starts to lose possession of it. So even though Southern recovers, this looks to me like one where they'll be able to overturn the call based off of the replay angles our crew's providing. All right, but let's think ahead here. If they overturn it, 
he didn't get enough for the first down. Right. So it would be fourth down. Similar area to the field as where they punted, except maybe five yards farther down. And a much shorter fourth down than the one they elected to not attempt on the previous series. So from this field position, as you're approaching the 30-yard line, this certainly could be one that Hugh Jackson would end up considering going for, perhaps a field goal or perhaps trying to convert a fourth and short. And honestly, to the question you're, you're posing there, Chris, I think it's a, a well-thought-out question because of the fact that Hugh Jackson, maybe even that play call of going with the QB run, perhaps just setting up a fourth and short, not even necessarily expecting to convert it with any certainty, but you call a play like that, perhaps you already know you're in four-down territory. It was a third and five, so you're right. You call it a run, you get two or three, you set up a fourth and much shorter, and try to chop it up into two. see how the uh, units have basically accepted the fate even though we haven't heard the <laughs> announcement of Jarvis Walker the special teams units are out field goal unit is out for Grambling like you referenced at the top of the show that the reigning Bayou Classic MVP is your place kicker the senior from Houston Five field goals and the game winner on the opposite end of the Superdome. After further review, the rule on the field is that the runner was actually down by contact at the 30 yard line. Therefore, it will be fourth down and five from the 30. Grammys with this ball. The clock will start on my signal. That's a part of where the review ends up continuing as well just to make sure they have the proper time that's going to be on the clock because when you don't pick up the first down there would have been no reason for the clock to stop but off the review the clock will end up starting again so garrett urban who made the game winner last season at the bayou classic his holder is jimmy isles the long snapper nolan wilson From 47. A lot behind it, but no good. Goes wide. And Garrett Urban, 5 for 5 last year at the Bayou Classic, 0 for 1 this afternoon. On the Louisiana Civil Eastern on NBC and Peacock. Sunday night, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers battle Jalen Hurts and the Eagles Sunday, 7 Eastern on NBC and Peacock. Chris Lewis, Anthony Heron, Lewis Johnson, Corey Robinson, Michael Smith all here with you for the 49th annual Bayou Classic. Grambling missed a 47-yard field goal, so it is Southern possession from the 30. With Dyson in motion. McCray on first. Dances. Sprints. Lofts. Incomplete. Kendrick Grimes was the intended receiver, as if there was one, as that was floating over the head of everybody on the sideline. And our chance to introduce Grambling's defense. Sundiata Anderson is an outstanding pass rusher, and he can rush from either a two or three point stance, working on another all swag season. Both linebackers between Joshua Reed and Lewis Matthews. We've already seen their skills on display in this game. The linebacking unit is special for Grambling. Certainly the strength of that Tigers defense. Joshua Reed, one of those linebackers, the tackle there, and it's third down. And in the secondary, we've seen a lot early in this game. Grambling will play plenty of man coverage. They've got all kinds of confidence, especially Ray Estes on the back end. Minnesota Gophers transfer. Third down and eight. With four wide and Rhymes in the backfield. McCray steps up, guns and completes. Right at the 40-yard line, diving back is August Pete the third for his first catch of the afternoon and a first down for Southern. August Pete transfer from Rice. Able to catch that pass. The most in rhythm B. Sean McCray has looked so far in this game. Eric Dooley 
just like he's always done, being the offensive play caller. McCray keeps it this time and sprints to the sideline, escorted out by the nickelback Donald Leak. I'd say it's a good sign early, Chris, for Southern that B. Sean McCray does look like his old mobile self. You know, one of the things that happened in their, their last game against Mississippi Valley was that he had to leave the game after the first series with a, a lower leg injury, and then it gave Lyndon McDaniel an opportunity to come in and lead them to a victory on senior day. Second and seven. You mentioned McCray was only two for two in that game a couple weeks back. Did throw a touchdown, but it was a lot of Bubba McDaniel. Harold Blood also saw some time in that game. Another inside move from Brian Powell, both in rundowns and on passing downs. You'll see him with that ability to, we use that term, dig it out, to be able to get through the inside shoulder of the tackle. Tempo on third down and nothing for Lincoln. Wow, the whole Tigers defense. Lewis Matthews was first, but the prowl was right behind him. Lumber being laid by GSU on the interior. They are meeting the running back for Southern with a bad attitude. Lewis Matthews yet again. And went tempo on that third down. Very quick to the line of scrimmage and snapped it fast as well. And Grambling's defense was ready for it. The Southern offensive line is having a really difficult time so far just tracking the blocking surfaces. You end up leaving your stance as an offensive lineman with target points where you think that defender is going to be. But there's so much movement for GSU that they can't keep up with it. Another punt. Robbins, Beauplan, Johnson, fair catch. Just outside the 20. All right, let's take you through the timeline. This is the 49th annual Bayou Classic. Started back in 1974. And Doug Williams, ever hear of him? First black quarterback to win a Super Bowl. First game on NBC's 1991. The first HBCU game on national television. The legend, Eddie Robinson. Final Bayou Classic was 1997. 2005 with Hurricane Katrina. The game was relocated to Houston. 2016, the first time both the teams were undefeated going into the game. That Grambling won by 22. We didn't have the first one that you called on the, on the time. <laughs> <Anthony> <laughs> Great moment <laughs> by you, classic history. You see some penetration from that Southern defensive front. Different defensive philosophy that Southern utilizes, led by Henry Miller. We heard Dooley brought over with him to lead his defense. But they don't do as much movement. There's not as much stem. They hit blocks. They get into the backfield. They impose their will on the opponent. Jordan Monroe, a freshman, one of the players penetrating into the backfield for the Jags. Henry Miller, the defensive coordinator for Southern. Childhood friends with Eric Dooley going back to New Orleans. Second and 15, the first deep shot. Right on target. Call Coleman. In plus territory for Grambling. There is a flag down. But a big play through the air for the Tigers. Would be a 54-yard pickup. Personal foul. Face mask. Number three. Defense. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. It's on Corian Harris. So at 15. Watch the release as he ends up working through the shoulder of the defensive back. It's a great stem because his spacing is so key and why this route doesn't run himself into coverage. I think that's a part of where maybe the late grab of the face master Corian Harris comes in at because he has to hit his landmark as a safety. Normally very effective at that, but you can tell it caught Southern off guard. You don't see a lot of attack passes from Grambling. Already the third time inside the 35 yard line for Grambling in this game. First down run for Chance Williams. Goes nowhere as Jalen Campbell sends a message for Southern. GSU fans have been accustomed over the years to seeing sort of a, a high-flying passing attack, volume passing, deep shots. They haven't been as effective with it this season. Early in the year, it was Cortarius Hawkins, who was the starting QB. Hugh Jackson ended up during the season electing to go a different route and get Julian Calvez in there. And we know Hugh Jackson can orchestrate an offense that throws the ball deep down the field. Whether it's at the college or NFL level, he's done it quite a bit. 
Second down. Galvez with a shifty move. Open space and slides right at the first down sticks. <laughs> wow. The youngster in his first Bayou Classic, Chris. This freshman, I said how decisive he is. Part of this, he has to be in that moment where Ty Farmer penetrates into the backfield and then immediately he becomes a ball killer. We're seeing growth of Julian Calvez. There were moments earlier in the season where he would try to extend the play, see if maybe he could keep his eyes down the field when it wasn't available. Williams has the outside. Angles towards the sideline. Cuts up the field and is bumped out of bounds at the four. Jordan Carter hammered him down, but it's a first and goal for Grambling. Chance Williams, more of a slasher, more of a one-cut running back. Not quite as explosive, not quite as shifty as Maurice Washington, but you do see he's got a top gear available to turn the corner. Look at Lyndon Rash. Outside the numbers, you got to have that on a run game that's going to turn the corner. Chance for the Tigers to take the lead late in the first. Bade ball, back shoulder, it's there, Lyndon Rash, hey, reward him for blocking, with the ball, touchdown, Grambling. Iso is Lyndon Rash, their leader. Yes, he extends the hands a bit, matched up with Kristen Davis. You're going to see in an offensive game, they allow the receivers to get away with that a bit. Well-placed football for the freshman QB, Calvez. And a well-earned try for Grambling. And a couple drives with great field position. That was their worst starting field position of the game. They go eight yards for the touchdown. In sixth place. Only took 239. Grambling up seven to nothing. Tigers are the aggressors in this game so far. You see them playing fast, playing free, playing loose in a way that they haven't consistently been able to maintain this season. Hugh Jackson, and even seeing him talking to him during the week, seeing him on the field before the game, certainly has displayed a level of confidence. On the whole this season, Southern has been the more consistent team of the two. They are the ones with the championship implications on the line. But we know when the Bayou Classic is here, both teams show up ready to roll. And ready to rock when you look at that world fame Tiger marching bag. Let's go downstairs to Lewis Johnson. All righty, finally some celebration here on the ground and sideline. Linden. I saw you earlier saying you guys were one play away from something happening. Take me back to that touchdown, Calvin. I mean, we, 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 we was driving the ball. We started from the 20. We drove. Uh, guys made plays down the field. Big runs, big catches. And I just kept it off and put the icing on cake. With such a young team, what does it mean for you to score first in this big classic? I mean, I just want everybody to get going. And, and we're going to see plenty more touchdowns. Everybody needs to be in the end zone. It's a great atmosphere, and I love it, baby. All righty, we'll let you get back to it. Thank yes, you, sir. All right, thank you. Uh, there you go. Fire it up. Thank you so much, Lewis. I don't need to add anything. <laughs> that sold the game in itself. Returned by an up man. A couple of shifty moves past the 40-yard line. That was Tyler Kirkwood for Southern on that return. And good chance for Southern to bounce right back. It's really cool to see a player as experienced as Lyndon Rash. He played his first Bayou Classic back in 2017, so he is as experienced as anyone on this roster for Grambling State. Recovered from an offseason knee surgery, so he's been working himself back into game condition, back into midseason form, and now here on this stage, where throughout his career he's only been able to play in the Bayou Classic about half the time, but he is leading this team in the spot. You heard him. More touchdowns to come. McRae for the 42, hands it off. Grimes is stripped up. Kevin Thomas, Chris McRae, both there. Second down coming up for Southern. Needs to be a response drive here for Southern just to get the game at their tempo. Right now, GSU are the aggressors. Oh, that snap way through the hands of McRae. All he can do is hop back on top of it inside the 30. He's saying to settle down and find a rhythm. Well, that won't help. 
well behind the chains now. The Southern University. There's the play that's emblematic of the first quarter for Southern. That might be it. Dallas Black, I mean, he got it back there. Certainly hit the quarterback, B. Sean McCray, in the hands. It just looked like McCray maybe wasn't quite ready for it. Well, Bradley's ready for it. 49th Annual Bayou Classic. One quarter down, Tigers in front. The Eagles have been off the charts all season. The 49th Annual Bayou Classic, presented by Oikos. Human Jukebox. They're ready for halftime. We still got another quarter to go before that. The Battle of the Bands. It's a game. It's a party. It's everything you could want. Saturday after Thanksgiving. After a snap that went through the hands of Michelle McRae, the quarterback for Southern. It's a third down and 22. Four man pressure. Fifth man comes late. McRae hit as he throws. Harmlessly incomplete. So that Southern offense, Anthony, really struggling to find that form that they've shown in their wins this season. It's been a pocket based offense so far for Southern. And when you have this attack mentality that Grambling State plays with in their front seven, it can be hard, especially with their offensive line. They've had a few bodies in and out, out of the lineup at times. I really think. They need to get B. Sean McCray on the move. Call him into some sprint action, some boot action. Things where you're changing the launch point where that defense can't just sort of tee off on a on a stationary pocket. I mean, Southern comes in as the team with a chance to win the SWAC West with a win. I'm interested to see how they would handle a potential close game. You look at that. Five of their six wins is the ball through the hands of Boatland. Boatland recovers. Does get it off. Wow. Fortunate for Southern that Grambling's rush didn't get there, and the punt is a good one that rolls all the way to the 27. There wow. is a flag down, though, back by the puncher. Running into the kicker. Defense. Well, running in wouldn't be any harm. He initially muffs it. Once the punter begins to run sideways, he only gets that QB protection for so long, especially once he gets outside the pocket. It won't end up negating things for Grambling too much anyway, but once the kid, once the punter begins to run sideways, if he gets outside the pocket, then he loses that same protection just like a quarterback. Right, so the kicker. Very fortunate turn of events. Nice recovery from Robin's bow plan to at least get the ball off and save some field position there. I mean, last year's Bayou Classic MVP was a kicker. For as for Southern, the MVP of the game so far is Popeland, the punter. So we'll see how GSU handles this offensively. On the whole, throughout the season, like we referenced earlier, they haven't been able to connect on the deep pass very frequently. They had the one-shot play that was connected from Calvez to Coleman early. From the 27, Washington double team tackle at the line of scrimmage. Peterson and Monroe each combined, but Grambling last drive only needed six plays to cover 80 yards. Impressive drive, a personal drive for Grambling State, both on the move and within the pocket. We saw Julian Calvez making it happen with his arm, with his legs, and have a playmaker out in the open field making grabs for their freshman QB. Lynn Grass, their leader on that side of the football. So Grambling State strikes first at the Bayou Classic. Second and 11. Flat pattern. And then immediately is Noah Bean, the tight end. The UNLV transfer is bumped out of bounds right near the original line of scrimmage. That's what I believe they need to focus on a little bit more here is as you threaten horizontally against that Southern defense, then find more vertical shots. They've gotten speed in the feet of the secondary a bit here. But I wouldn't be surprised at all if we see another vertical pass after Grambling. If GSU is able to convert this first down. J.R. Waters is a deep threat. He is on the top of your screen. At least was. <laughs> to the slot now at the top. 
Third and nine, four-man rush. Galvez looks at it, examines, rolls, points, and darts out of bounds. And then some late pushing and shoving. Southern making sure that hey, nothing late. <laughs> no excuse to throw the flag on a third down that didn't pick up the first. And officials trying to get control of it. Kajaye Holloway involved. Bean is there. Cooler heads for the moment prevail. You get a few bodies, especially when your quarterback is on that opposing sideline. Offensive lineman, they, the hair on the back of their neck begins to stand up. They get into protector mode. There's uh, one defender come in. They feel like Ty Farmer made a late shove. They feel like the other guy from Southern knocks him down when he doesn't need to. But you want that heightened awareness. You want that heightened intensity while at the same time making sure you are staying within the framework of the rules. That's Chandler Whitfield. Usually the returner when the ball is more in the field. When it's inside the 20, you'll see a lot of Kendrick Rise back there. Whitfield is a playmaker. Gets a chance. What a tackle. As Grambling on special teams makes a play. That's Burley. There is a flag down on the punt. That could have been a lot worse for Grambling on that punt. Kellen Burley on special teams. The impressive tackle will check the penalty. During the return, personal foul, blindside block, number 30, return team. Half the distance to the goal, first down. There's that illegal block. Pinballing at the Superdome. Dad, when is the few classic? Some of football's best attended HBCUs. Bullet Bob Hayes. Oh man, the speed of Bullet Bob and Fam U. Walter Payton, you're a Chicago guy. Sweetness. We all grew up wanting to be like Walter Payton. So many folks grew up wanting to be like Doug Williams, all the success he's had. Player and an executive. Award named after the Hall of Famer Jerry Rice. The mogul Michael Strahan also on the list as Grambling Lee's 7 to nothing. Let's go to Lewis with a special guest. Absolutely with one of the HBCU greats, Doug Williams. It's our annual get-together here at the Bayou Classic. Doug, it's great to see you and hear from you. How was your holiday so far? How they been great, Lewis? Real good. You know, I was waiting on this game, and you know, I wasn't able to make it, but I knew I was going to watch it on TV today. Absolutely. So, uh, give me your thoughts on Hugh Jackson, who comes to Grambling with a tremendous coaching experience, a lot of it from the NFL, and what you think he is going to do with this program, not just this year, but uh, in the years to come. Well, you know, when when they chose uh, Hugh Jackson and, and James Harris and myself, you know, we talked about it. We thought with his experience. Having been an offensive coordinator in a lot of big time schools, a head coach in the National Football League twice, uh, I look at it that it was good for Grambin. It's just a matter of getting his feet on the ground and getting everything going in the right direction. Yeah, I think that's going to be the case. And we've got to talk about the SWAC real quick and really what Deion Sanders did at Jackson State coming in to really electrify the conference, bring so much attention to it. What are your thoughts on what he's done for black college football and what will he mean if he stays or if he leaves? Well, I think, I think what Deion has done has, in the sweat and black college football has enlightened people again. You know, at one time, uh, the story of black college football was very exciting. Then when segregation integration came in, we kind of lost that touch. I think Dion has brought it back and let them know that we do play football. It could be exciting. It could be electric. And Dion has brought a lot to Jackson State and, and gave a lot to a lot of the black institutions, letting people know that uh, we're still here. All righty. And last thing real quick, I'm in the uh, bench area where you love to be. Julian Calvez has gotten your team on the scoreboard. Doug, it's great to see you again. Thanks for catching up, and we look forward to next year, okay? Take care. All the best. All right. Thank you all. Enjoy yourself. Thanks so much. Great to catch up with the great Doug Williams, guys. Oh, what a treat it is. Right. Doug Williams joining us. Man. 
mean, you mentioned it. A freshman quarterback in this game. And he's one person who's done it. That rush was on as Bo Plan does handle it. Another tradition. And Dewey Sausage and then Lewis Johnson interviewing Doug Williams. All these things synonymous with the Bayou Classic. Do we have any gumbo we can bring up here? You're talking uh, about I'm looking sausage. for it. Let me see. Yeah, so bring it up. That's a tease. <laughs>with just over nine minutes to go in the first half but the action doesn't stop at halftime you know anything about the bayou classic you know it only heats up i'm standing between grambling's drum major candace hawthorne a senior from dallas texas and to my left is nataj the mirage johnson a junior from new iberia louisiana candace we were talking earlier this is your second bayou classic so you're a veteran at this how is the world famed Grambling State Tiger marching band gonna cook at halftime. Oh man. 
All I got to say is we always come show up and show out. Show up and show out. Nataj, you look like you mean business right here. What does the Southern University Human Jukebox have in store for us at halftime? Energy, 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 uh, swag, high knee lift, and phenomenal music. Why do they call you the Mirage? Because I'm like an optical illusion. You know, I come with a lot of tricks, a few tricks. Uh, people can, you know, think, hey, look good, you know. Uh, Mirage really, a Mirage is really a, a optical illusion, so that just basically describes me, you know. I got you. I got you. And Candace, you as a senior, what does this moment that you're about to experience at that time mean to you? It's bittersweet because it's the last one for me. Bittersweet. I just, just really enjoy the HBCU experience. We know y'all gonna put on a show for us. Let's get it back to the game. Back to Chris and Anthony in the booth. Battle of the Bands coming up at halftime, guys. Thanks so much, Michael. That was a battle for the catch. Yeah. From Aurelius Dyson, and he brought it in. A contested catch to move into plus territory. From right here, the two-lane transfer now playing with Southern. And we're finally seeing their offense moving the pocket, getting B. Sean McCray outside, changing the launch point. So now his vision more clear to be able to deliver it accurate. He caught it on the best quarterback that Grambling has. Leads to this. McCray explodes. Watches. Just shorts. He wanted a touchdown. He explodes for 26. Thomas saves the touchdown. What a run. Eric Dooley calls him into movement on the previous snap. Now call his, calls him as a runner up between the teeth of the defense. Quick tempo in the red zone. Carl Liggin, touchdown, Southern. Big turn of events for the Jags defense. Fumble gift wrapped by GSU's freshman QB. Not only does their defense recover, but the offense converts it into points. That play was so fast, it almost looked like a mirage. <laughs> I see what you did there. Extra point, Joshua Griffin. Grambling State Sub-7, seven, Southern 7 at the 49th Annual Bayou Classic. The interior of that Southern offensive line, they stick on blocks at the point of attack. And you had Eli Fields start to wash the pile. Made a cavernous running lane for Carl Liggett. Then we get into the paint for the Jazz. It's a big response for Southern because so much of the confidence. You know, people use the term momentum a lot. It's, momentum is essentially just confidence. You could tell that Grambling State was playing with so much confidence on each side of the football. Southern, they come in with that championship possibility. If they win today, they make the SWAC championship game. They looked a little tight to me throughout that first quarter. Then your defense makes a play. Sudden change for that Southern offense. They convert it to points. How can you not be losing your band playing like that, though? Let's get the human jukebox going. Strike him up. do their thing as Grambling will take over in a tie game from the 25-yard line. Where GSU had been effective offensively in this game, part of it had been surprising. We've seen them attempt a couple of jump passes, which they haven't been able to pick up. Explosive pass plays that frequently this season, but getting their quarterback on the move. Calling movement of the launch point, but Julian Calvez has been decisive even as the play breaks down. Not trying to do too much, move the chains. Nice little baseball slide for Hugh Jackson. He needs to make sure he calms his freshman QB down, get his offense right back into rhythm. It's interesting. Out of the two teams, Grambling has much more experience playing in close games. 
Five of the six Southern wins by multiple touchdowns. Their losses all blowouts too. Come back on first down. Lyndon Rash, who caught the touchdown, picks up eight. That's a nice way to get Julian Calvez into rhythm. Actually, that one hit the ground. Okay. They're rolling it incomplete. So they'll take away the catch. Well, the entire Southern secondary did run in and try to convince the officials that it Ooh. wasn't caught, and they were certainly accurate. You've mentioned it, Anthony. Throughout the year, Grambling's had their troubles with their receivers with these drops. Well, that's certainly not the easiest catch in the world for Lyndon Rass, but one that hits him in both hands. you got to go down around your knees to get it, but a more than catchable ball that a receiver of Lyndon Rass's capability should have been able to haul in. Game clock operator, please put 651 on the game clock. The clock will start on the snap. 6.51. And we weren't the only ones who thought that was a catch. <laughs> clock operator kept that clock moving a little bit, thinking that that was an eight-yard completion. So Eric Dooley, oh, what a story for him, the Southern head coach. Used to be the offensive coordinator at Grambling, longtime assistant at Southern for Pete Richardson. First year on the sideline for Southern as the head coach at the Bayou Classic. Saw his team come from... A deficit to tie it at seven. His defense on the field on second and ten. Explosive run. Boyd Chalk the first. Chalk down the number. Rumbles all the way towards the 30. So it doesn't matter whether it's Washington, Williams, or Chalk. They've each had big runs. The gap was evaded here by the experienced defensive lineman Jason Dumas. Well, undersized on the inside, so he'll hit blocks pretty effectively, but every once in a while, he'll make a quick swim move to the outside. That's what opened up the run lane. Well, that hole was plugged, but it doesn't matter. Chalk powerfully runs through it and still gains about four. Shelby Gibbons involved defensively, and Chalk heads to the sideline, much deserved. It's a break. We saw some motions and really some swinging gate type formations from GSU early in the game. We saw offensive linemen lined up outside the numbers and they would motion back to more of a traditional set. Haven't seen as much of that after the initial couple of series of the game. We wonder when they come back to it, maybe they'll actually throw a pass towards the outside behind some of those big bodies. Before the snap whistle, false start signaled. False start. Offense, number one. Five-yard penalty, main second half. That's been a huge bugaboo this season for Grambling. More so on offense even than defense. A lot of these procedural errors, unforced errors, picking up penalties. Hugh Jackson, not only the head coach, but he as well as Eric Dooley, the offensive play caller, bringing his system to Grambling. Part of the process of earning the G back. We'll get into that more as the uh, the broadcast moves on. But at one point, had that G removed from the helmet. They needed to earn it. Trying to earn a deep shot down the near sideline. But Coleman was double teamed. Third down and long coming up. Carl Coleman wasn't open there. But it's at least an attack pass. You can lengthen the coverage even when it's incomplete. But you put speed in the feet of Southern's defensive backs. That's something that even strategically can open up run lanes. It can set up other route combinations when they know that a receiver is willing to try to run by them. They know a passing game is willing to try to throw it over their head. So you have third and 11 from the 33. Is this where you try to splice it into two separate plays here if you're grambling? I think strategically that could certainly make a lot of sense. Even if you run a screen pass or a draw play, pick up a few yards here and set up a manageable fourth down. Well, they'll talk about it. Hugh Jackson calls second time out. Timeout. Grim. So Hugh Jackson uses Grambling's second timeout. And we talked a bit about how Hugh Jackson in his first year, one of the things that he did to kind of help reestablish the culture of Grambling football is prior to the Bethune-Cookman game, he decided to remove the G from the helmets of the Grambling Tigers. That G stands for greatness, he said. That's not given, it's earned. And they weren't doing what it took to earn the G. 
told the team, hey, you need to understand the history, understand the tradition of Grambling football, what to do on the field, what to do off the field. And the leaders were all about the challenge of trying to earn that G back a few weeks later. They were able to get it back to the side of their helmet. They've been playing much better over the last month. After the timeout, third down and 11. Valdez on the comeback. Rash. First down, Tigers. Best ball that Julian Calvez has thrown the entire game so far. He stuck his back foot in the ground, got it out of his hands in rhythm and with accuracy. The ball was leaving Calvez's hand before Rash had even come out of his break. It's a beautiful throw and catch. Rash caught the touchdown on a fade route. Grambling's only touchdown. Southern responded with a touchdown run of their own. Going with a tackle overlook here for Grambling. He got bigger bodies to the left side of the offensive formation. Ball start. Offense. Number 55. Five yard penalty. Two first down. So when you want to get more complicated with the formation, sometimes you see more procedural penalties because of it. There's so much within this offense that Hugh Jackson has been implementing this season. His first year as the Grambling coach, first year for all these players learning his system. Went through some of the various machinations of, of what all plays into that a little bit earlier in the broadcast, but it can be difficult. With trips to the near side, first down, a screen in and out of the hands of Chance Williams. That's incomplete. Southern's defense reacts as if that's a fumble. It is not. <laughs> so we're going to waste a lot of time and energy trotting towards the end zone just in case. Just in case, but this did very clearly appear to be an incomplete pass. And that's one where, as Chance Williams goes back and Hugh Jackson, John Simon, they evaluate this on film, they're going to say, you know what, just go up and pluck the football with your hands. There's no reason there on a floating pass to allow that football to get into his body. He turned and saw Jalen Campbell coming at him. <laughs> yeah, that, that could have an effect on you. Uh, you don't only catch the football with your hands, you have to catch it with your eyes. If your eyes are on the defender who's coming to clean your clock, it's a lot more difficult to reel it in. Second and 15. Valdez, jump ball. Rash. Over his head. He sort of lost it. You can see him looking back, trying to track the football. And that's where I'm actually going to put that more on the experienced player. I believe Julian Calvez threw the football towards that front pylon where you want the target place to be. But Lynn, Lynn Rash just sort of slowed his route up to see as he began to turn around. He's almost running backwards, looking up, trying to track the football, as opposed to running to the spot where he should expect the football to be delivered. Looking up at those Caesar Superdome lights. <laughs> Gotta say, walking down on the field pregame, it just feels big. These lights, the angles, no matter what's here. Third and 15. Calvez points. Jumps back. Wants to stay behind the line of scrimmage. But there was nothing there. Jalen Campbell, another impact play on the drive to chase him out of bounds. Fourth down. Place kicker, as you referenced, last season's. Bayou Classic MVP, Garrett Urban will get another opportunity. He was so critical, so great for them last season. It's been a bit of an off year for Garrett Urban by his standards this season. Just 5 for 11. As long as 41. This one's 44. Get Grambling the lead. Lean snap. Urban loves the Superdome. Grambling State 10, Southern 7, 44 yarder for last year's Bayou Classic MVP. Garrett Urban stays fly in New Orleans. Friday on Stay tuned for the Bayou Classic Halftime Show presented by Oikos. Coming up, Battle of the Bands. Watch Grambling State's world-famed Tiger Marching Band go head-to-head -head with Southern's Human Jukebox. You won't want to miss it. We have Michael Smith.
Talk to the leaders on each side. I thought you were about to say Michael Smith was going to be one of the uh, honorary drum majors, I perhaps. I mean, that would be fun to watch. we see surprises during the halftime show here over the years. Michael Smith has done it all in the world, so I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Grambling, nine play, 49 yard drive, capped off by a 44 yard field goal by Garrett Urban, who kicks off. Morgan from the one. Spins. Mets. And walled off at the 23. And it's the Bayou Classic. Going to have some extra pushing and shoving. Southern, though, on their last drive, their offense woke up. It was the B. Sean McCray show. They got him out of the pocket on the move. It enhanced his passing ability and the legs took over and because he was such a threat the defense doesn't react as effectively to Carl Liggett as the running back oh he put no didn't pull a thing uh, shaking it again what's with the fake hamstrings <laughs> on the celebration like Justin Jefferson did that the other day <laughs> LSU former receiver with the Vikings this is on my fantasy team so I was wondering like is he hurt? Oh, okay. oh, no, no, yeah, no, okay. he's concerned. just fine I feel you First down. Explosive Carl Ligon again back to work. Kevin Thomas meets him. Pick up a four. Second and six. There's been less penetration for Grambling within their defensive front here the last couple of series, and part of that is because we've seen Eric Dooley begin to move the launch point, and so just the eyes of the defense are drawn towards the quarterback in a different way. Second and six. The legs of McCray. First down, Southern. Matthews angles him out of bounds. It's where he's at his best. You know, when you get Deshaun McCray on the move, start to utilize his legs, it sets up what he's able to do as a passer as well. You can dictate terms to the opponent by utilizing the multi-dimensional talents that he possesses as a QB. He's run for six touchdowns this year. He's thrown for 13. From the 37, Ligon slips through. Ligon, first down Southern to the 44. Quincy Mitchell credit for the tackle. And with as much as McCray has been able to hurt them with his legs, then you get a little bit of a slower squeeze from the edge defender. You don't see the defense from the wide side of the field crashing down, getting involved in the run game. In that case, it was Sundiata Anderson who made a couple of plays chasing from the backside earlier. Southern a little confused here with the formation. Yeah, Cornelius Dyson at the bottom of your screen trying to come onto the field. Wasn't sure if he should be on or off. <laughs> and Eric Dooley says enough of that. Timeout. Well, Eric Dooley is no stranger to having multi multi-dimensional talents at quarterback when he was the play caller for Grambling State working under Robert Fox. He had Jonathan Williams as a quarterback, a SWAC Offensive Player of the Year. Had Devontae Kincaid, SWAC Offensive Player of the Year as a quarterback. Both guys who could hurt you, not only with their wing, but on the hoof as well. He's just molding his junior college transfer, B. Sean McCray, into that same sort of image. It's really fun, the dynamic between the two coaches. You have Eric Dooley in his first year, SWAC, a lifer, right. familiar with both sides. Then you have, on the other side, Hugh Jackson, also first year, First time really involved at the Bayou Classic in any role. His only <laughs> HBCU football experience before this was last year at Tennessee State. Under Eddie George as McCray scrambles to the 40-yard line. Meets Joshua Reed. Second down coming up. A minute 25 to go in the half. See how Southern manages the clock here. Down by three points. Yeah, Joshua Reed in a spiral that time. Didn't drop deep into pass coverage. There was man on the back end. So Reed just had eyes on the QB the entire time. Empty for McCray. Uses the draw. That first step he has is a blur. It is. just accelerates right through the line of scrimmage. But he's shy of the first down. So it's third down, and that clock continues to move. Third and three. McCray's been an extremely efficient passer through most of the season, but a lot of that is generated by the threat he can be with his legs to the opposing defense. It's Bernard Childs, and with the clock moving, a southern injury, there'll likely be another timeout by the Jaguars. 
It's good to see the man they call Deuce. Deuce Child's able to at least work off the field. He's on power. Be dangerous territory in and around the line of scrimmage. Bodies flying everywhere. Brian Powell is a defender, made the tackle. He and B. Sean McCrane up landing on the leg of Bernard Childs. Yeah, just see if you can shake it off a little bit. I've been there, done that. So on the snap. It's been an impressive game for Julian Calvez. He's trying to figure things out on the fly here. You see Childs trying to see if he can work his way back into the lineup if possible. They've rotated bodies through this offensive line quite a bit this season for Southern. So it wouldn't be the first time they've had to have someone else step in in the midst of a drive. So with Childs having to be assisted to the sideline and play being stopped, that is Southern's second timeout used with 46 seconds left. So they only have one to go for the third and three coming up. Could end up being critical as they attempt to put points on the board with 46 seconds to go. Once again, empty. Kind of stack receivers on the near side. That's an interesting look. On third, low snap, slant route, right there, in stride. Allen explodes to the five. Cassius Allen. He picked up the blitz of Lewis Matthews, Brian Powell, really effectively. As they did that, it gave just enough time for B. Sean McCray to feed the football to his playmaker one-on-one -on -one as Allen matched up in the open field. 32 yards, first and goal. Rhymes all alone. Touchdown, Southern. Kendrick Rhymes and the Jaguars take the lead. There was some patience shown there as well, even from a clock management perspective. Eric Dooley just electing to not go hurry up, not go quick snap. Some of his players even began shouting, clock, clock. You can tell Eric Dooley told them he's not going to clock that. Wants to make sure there's as little time available as possible when GSU gets the football back. Griffin twists down as the extra point goes through. There is a flag right by him likely running into. And you're right, Eric Dooley's Went team. Went into the kicker. Defense. The penalty declined. The play results, extra point. Executed that drive about as well as you can. Got the big slant on third down and punctuated. As you reference that third down slant, biggest moment of the drive, an opportunity for maybe punt, field goal, something just to bring the drive to a head for GSU's defense, and their pressure has been so effective throughout the bulk of the first half. But that time, when it had to happen on third down, this offensive line for Southern, with one of their starters banged up, they're able to pick up that pressure. And you got a quarterback who's getting into a rhythm with Deshaun McCray. Finds Cassius Allen one-on-one. -on -one. That set up the score. Gray, after a slow start, he showed off those skills both through the air and on the ground, and it's made him one of the toughest to stop in the SWAC. Came into this game number two in pass efficiency in the SWAC, just behind Shador Sanders and no one else. He's a little streaky, but he certainly can be very effective as a passer. Through the end zone, 25 seconds left. I imagine if you're a Hugh Jackson and Grambling, you don't try to force the issue with 25 seconds left and only one timeout. If there would have been an opportunity for a return, you get some field position, then you know, I think you would have definitively taken a, a fairly aggressive approach. I don't know, Chris. I mean, you're, I think you're most likely, most likely you just take a knee and get into the locker room with a freshman quarterback. But... There's no SWAC championship game out there, you know, waiting beyond this one for GSU. So I think there's some consideration that could have been given. 
So going into attack mode with the timeout remaining, but this does make sense where GSU is just going to take a knee. They'll get us right on the doorstep of the Battle of the Bands, the halftime show presented by Oikos. Competitive. Grambling scored first. Southern responded. Grambling answered with a field goal. And Southern capped off the half with a touchdown. 14-10. Southern leads at the end of the first 30 minutes. Battle of the Bands coming up. Make merry and dance with glee. Welcome to the Bayou Classic Halftime Show presented by Oikos. Here at the Bayou Classic, football is only half the fun. It is time for the Battle of the Bands. First up, Grambling State's world-famed and Tigers now, marching Grambling band. State University world-famed marching Tigers. And if I make it, performance is Texas, Candace Hawthorne, straight out of Monroe, Louisiana, they call him Dre, the run Dre Hatfield, and I'm going to tell you, see your drum major from the Lake, Lancaster, Texas, Shevion Jones, the best to ever do it, New Orleans, Louisiana, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Since 1926, this prestigious, electrifying, multi-tied band has performed in nearly every major stadium across the world. Africa, Tokyo, Spain, from the U.S. Coast to Coast, and the NBA All-Star Game. BET to stadium seats. Yeah, the whole to the Super Bowl. They know our name. We are the world.
Warriors. I want you to sing it if you know it. SWV. What you do to me? Sing it if you know it. Let's go. Welcome back to the Bayou Classic Halftime Show presented by Oikos. Let's hear now from the human jukebox, the Southern University Marching Band. Student Government Association President. After completing his undergraduate studies, he plans to enroll in an online MBA program at Southern University while working for a Fortune 500 company as a mechanical engineer. And now, the Southern University Jukebox. Southern University Marching Band from Jaguar Land. The Southern University Marching Band is led by Drum Major Nataz, The Mirage, Johnson, 
from New Iberia, Louisiana. Show him some love. together for the fabulous dancing dolls as they dazzle you with style and grace the tune is called
moving at 360 steps per minute. One of the many reasons why when you say Southern University Marching Band, it means excitement. It is the S on their chest that lets you know that they're the best. The Southern University Marching Band is simply America's finest. So sit back, relax, for you're about to experience the most exciting time of your life. As the stimulating, the dazzling, the house rocker, the rock of all houses and the crowd pleaser takes you on a ride. The human jukebox will now jam to danger. Mic check, mic check. Get it ready, get it ready, get it ready, ready. Get it ready, get it ready, ready. Check this out. Talk that stuff, not roll with it. Talk that stuff, not roll with it. Talk that stuff, not roll with it. Talk that stuff, not walking like a dog. Walking like a dog. Walking like a dog. Walking like a dog. Walk down, walk down. Walking like a dog. Walking like a dog. Walking like a. Let's take a dog for a walk. I'm walking like a chicken, like a talking like a chicken, like a walking like a talking like a walking like a. Yeah, walking like a chicken, like a talking like a chicken, like a walking like a. City Marching Band is under the direction of the maestro. Mr. Kevin Taylor, assistant directors are Cedric Ty, Kenny Collins, Safra Ruth, Dan Bidell, and Lorenzo Hart. And your doll sponsors are Miss Tracy Green. You've been watching the Bayou Classic Halftime Show, presented by Oikos. Did you know Google makes a phone? Welcome back to the 49th Annual Bayou Classic, presented by Oikos, with Southern in front. With Anthony Heron, Chris Lewis here with you. Okay, halftime show, fire. <laughs> Battle of the bands, <laughs> out of this world. But we're back to Literal focusing. Fire at different points. Yeah, also, yeah. it's pretty cool. We're back to focusing on what's <laughs> happening in the game. And the game's been great. Back and forth, alternating scores, and right now Southern in the lead. They are. And we saw early on, you know, we've seen kind of some back and forth, the chess match schematically between both of these teams. Early on, all the movement, the stem, the disguise pre-snap that Grambling was throwing at Southern was throwing them out because of all the penetration into the backfield. Then Eric Dooley decided to get his quarterback, Deshaun McCray, on the move, calling him into movement, bearing the launch point. So we saw that that was able to generate a lot of offense for Southern, and now they've started to put some points on the board. This extended halftime, though, Chris, we'll see what the counterpunch is from each opponent. You said extended indeed. Saw some of the teams just looking at the bands as they were late to come out. Second half from the Superdome. It's next. Good checkup? No. Start of the third quarter for a report on Grambling. Let's go to Lewis Johnson. All right, Chris, thanks so much. Talked to Hugh Jackson a few moments ago, and all of his comments were about the offense. And what he said he wants to see in the second half is more consistency in the offense and getting this ball moving down the field. He did make one comment about the freshman quarterback, Julian Calvez, who he said has played pretty good. But watch for this, guys. He said he wants Julian to recognize cover zero and then make the right play. So let's keep an eye on that. Chris. All right, Anthony, I got to go right to you. All right, recognize it, cover zero, <laughs> make the right play. What does that mean? When you see man coverage on the back end, that cover zero, all the bodies walked up towards the line of scrimmage, no deep safety help, attack the one-on-one -on -one matchup. We've seen them a few times. Try to attack with the deep pass. Look for more opportunities at Grambling State will try to exploit there to their playmakers. Some big plays on the board out there. Got to hit them. 
Antonio Jones. Aggressive. Oh, okay. Across the goal line. Boy, that does that not work? What a disaster there for Antonio Jones. Does have a 54 yarder on the season. Not quite that time. All right, for a report on Southern, let's go to Corey Robinson. Thanks, Chris. So I was actually walking by Southern's locker room, and I saw a coach clapping above his hands. The whole team was singing. I asked Coach Dooley, what's up with that? You guys sing before you come back out? He said, yeah, the guys love to sing. We know what's at stake. This is just to get them motivated. They sing a hymn in the locker room before they run out. And I said, okay, well, how do you manage your team's emotions, understanding that you're only one half away from making the SWAC championship? And he said, he looked me dead in the eye and said, emotions are out of the window. We know what's at stake. We just got to go finish. Chris? Well, at stake for both teams, a series lead in the Bayou Classic for Southern. It's a spot in the SWAT championship game. After the wayward kick return, first down run for Chance Williams, and he changes field position just like that. So it was a poor kick return, but Williams brings it out past the 25. Jordan Carter on the tackle, and Grambling now has some breathing room. Does feel worthy of note that Eric Dooley grew up in the church choir as well. So he's all about singing at all times, but his defense able to let Chance Williams out the gate here. And like you referenced, changing field position, now the entire playbook more open to the Grambling offense. If we're going to mention Eric Dooley's background, we'd be remiss to not mention his fashion sense. He'd be upset <laughs> if we didn't mention Without his shop style. Yes. Best dressed man in the sweat. The freshman Calais. Pressure. Escapes. Looks up. Floats. Completes. Williams. Hits. Shy of the 45. Rodney Johnson Jr. found him. But it is another first down for Grambling. Exceptional work there extending the play by Julian Calvez because initially you get Trey Lang into the backfield and then Jason Dumas with an opportunity also. But Calvez keeping his eyes down the field, finding his running back in this scramble drill chance williams this time comes up with the grab after having an early drop in the first half that's a jason dumas preseason all swack two-time all swack performer at prairie view a and m with eric dooley tackle as a tight end in motion chalk to the outside uses a stiff arm and run out right at midfield with a flag Jordan Monroe. His tackle might have resulted in that flag coming out and perhaps more yards for Grambling. And it looked close. The, the grab was certainly up around the face, the helmet, horse collar, face mask area. There's something available to call. Personal foul. Horse collar tackle. Defense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Initially, there, there were some Grambling State folks on the sideline, you know, asking for a face mask. But you see there, he did have them by the back of the jersey and, you know, to some extent, the back of the helmet as well. And if you run with the ball carrier for a few strides before whipping him down from behind, then it shouldn't draw the flag. There, you did see the defender, Jordan Monroe, take him immediately down to the ground. You see so many dangerous injuries on that kind of action that grab from behind. The three receivers near side, first down. Calvez examines, rifles, incomplete. Looking for Edward Smith. Instead, it was Glenn Brown on one in coverage. Spectacular work by Glenn Brown there in coverage. And because the protection broke down, Julian Calvez had to extend the play. He wanted to go to that attack pass right off the bat, but he had to start to move and evade pass rushers as he held the football. That's where... Jason Dumas just kind of clawing away at the feet of Calvez behind in the pocket. Same formation. This time it's a run. Chalk bounces, spins, stays up. Darts. Finally run down. Second effort, third effort, fourth effort from Floyd. Chalk the fourth. Footwork resembling of Gregory Hines. All kinds of footwork there, not only in the backfield, at the second and third level. He's got those cleats spatted. Just like Eddie Robinson used to let these Grambling State players do in the Bayou Classic. Tough to bring down. Christian Davis 
was down late for Southern. He's the one who's getting helped off. Boy, whether it's been Washington, who we haven't seen since his explosive run in the first half, where he kind of came up a little gimpy on the ankle tackle. Floyd Shaw, Chance Williams, they've all provided a boost on the ground. From the five. Galvez on the draw. Lowers the shoulder. Big pile up. Moves it to about the two. And this area of the field, Chris, is where GSU has been most effective this season. They come in as the number two red zone offense in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. You tend to, in the red zone, as the space gets more confined, defenders have less grass to cover. You're trying to create space, or you're trying to create matchups. Here, looks like they're going to use it to create a matchup. With the quarterback under center, Calvez on the sneak. He's close. Can't see the ball from this angle. It looks like it's short. It's ruled short. And third down upcoming. They continue under center here inside the one-yard line. I'm going to look for my guy number one. I'm going to look for Jason Dumas working on his third consecutive season, perhaps. He's being an all-Southwestern Athletic Conference performer. You need the interior of the line of scrimmage to rise up from the one-yard line. Chris Chernak. You see him down trying to find that ball. Tough task. Chernak with just awesome size, 6'8", 327 pounds. Transfer from Stony Brook, from Brooklyn. Remember the uh, quote last year from Terrence Graves, who was the interim head coach for Grambling, now on the Southern staff, by the way, uh, said about Chernak, he's gifted, but he needs a little nasty. <laughs> There's some nasty on the interior of that southern defensive line. That 500-pound bench press available to Jason Dumas. See if he can get some movement on the inside. Spread out with the tight end being to the right. Now under center. Galvez tries to crawl ahead. No signal yet. He's short. Southern's defense confirms it. And it's fourth down. After knocking it back at the point of attack, the individual picking up bodies off the pile was their leader on defense who came over from Prairie View A&M with Eric Dooley, Jason Dumas. They had him and Willie Miles working on the inside. And Willie Miles, not very tall either, 5'9", 350 pounds. Jason Dumas, 5'10", 280. You need a few inches to go here to retake the lead in the Bayou Classic. We've seen two sneaks that were short. Do we see another on fourth down? Will wait. Timeout for Amblin. That's one thing. We had Lewis Johnson interview Doug Williams earlier in the show. Doug, of course, started for Bayou Classics. His initial one as a freshman in the first Classic. Doug's a big boy. So even as a freshman, you know, you got Doug, you want to go QB sneak, the 220-plus. He can help move the pile. Julian Calvez, not as statuesque, you know, not as formidable physically yet. Ooh, the alliteration. <laughs> I like it. So we'll see. Do you continue where your offensive line behind Tyler Thomas at center, Ashanti Cole wheeling people out of the interior, but not necessarily getting the true movement that you want to force at the point of attack. One coaching point I would give to Julian Calvez would be a slight delay, just a little bit of hesitation. If they go QB sneak again, just have the calm, the comfort to allow the pile to move a bit and just see where that crack, where that crevice develops, then surge forward, lunge forward, try to attack where you see there may be a crease. Would you go quarterback sneak again? Seen two that were short, but this one's a little bit closer. I would. And this is where, you know, kind of modern football, you see teams get back into the shotgun. I'm not always a fan of it, but their shotgun run game has been very effective. I wouldn't honestly mind if they got into the shotgun and then you get a Floyd Chalk or a Chance Williams, even a C.J. Russell working downhill at the opponent. 
Traditionally, you've tried QB sneak a couple of times. I get it. That hasn't worked. I do think changing things up here would make sense for GSU. Well, you called it shotgun at least for now with an empty set. They change it up, bring in the heavy now. Fourth and goal to give Grambling State the lead. Galvez sneak. He's blown up initially. He sticks with it. That hesitation that you mentioned, Anthony. Touchdown, Grambling. It's not easy to do it because you want to advance on the opponent as quickly as you can. But that little hesitation, and it's really forced by Jason Dumas on the interior. It's forced by Willie Miles for what happens on that southern defensive front. But after you wake that Miller moment, then a lot of times these little lanes and crevices can end up appearing. Miller moment. Yeah, that's a, I never heard that one, actually. Trademark that. <laughs> Nine plays, 94 yards. Remember, that was a tough kick return for Grambling to begin it. But it ends from the one. Galvez, fourth rushing touchdown of the season. Uh, oh, I yeah, hit it in. <laughs> we got a lot of... Tiger Woods G's off against his friends and rivals in the Hero World Challenge for an incredible weekend of golf. December 1st through the 4th on NBC, Golf Channel, and Peacock. Oh, man. Café du Monde. You said, oh, man, I thought you were about to go in on <laughs> what you did there, what you had, the menus, how many you ate. So I, I was impatient. Uh, I, I was not willing to wait in the line for the popular Café du Monde. So I went to a nearby beignet place. Very tasty. Café beignet. Uh, Simple name. Good. And exactly what they call it. <laughs> you get what you expect. I wonder if by decree I could maybe declare like a national beignet day. we got a national day for everything That's else. That's true. Now. Morgan to the 30. All right, we got Michael Smith with a special guest. Hey, guys, thanks. I'm here now with Chief Communications Officer of Procter & Gamble, Damon Jones. Procter & Gamble is the presenting sponsor for the 49th Bayou Classic. Damon, what does it mean for Procter & Gamble to be involved with this event, this institution, in such a meaningful way? This is our sixth year, Michael, being back here supporting Grambling and, uh, and Southern. It's just a great opportunity to really ensure that the students who are working hard to, you know, advance their, their education have the opportunities. We're well over $2 million in scholarships that have been provided, uh, and it's really just about family, future generations, and ensuring the community is supported as they've supported us. That's good stuff, and a $600,000 donation you guys gave to both schools earlier on. So this is the 49th Bayou Classic, the big 5-0 next year. I know your brain and your team's brain is always already working, your wheels are already turning. What's in store for next year? Uh, next year is going to be the biggest and, and best ever. When you come here to New Orleans, there is such tradition. You see families, generations of families, uh, because these institutions mean so much to them. So we want to be a part of such a special celebration and really bring the brands back into people's homes. Damon, thank you and Procter and & Gamble for pouring into this tradition the way you have. We appreciate it. Thank you. Back to you guys. Appreciate it, Michael. Yeah, next year, 50th. I, I can't wait to see what's coming. Second down. Kendrick Rhymes, 35 and a half, and third down for Southern. So we're seeing them attack vertically with the run game here. It would be good, I believe, for Southern to start to get B. Sean McCray back on the move again. Attack the longitude and the latitude. Go vertically and horizontally against this moving, stemming, disguising, attacking Tigers defense. To contextualize the score here, I mean, Southern's a team that comes in 6-4 and four and a chance to win the SWAC West with a victory. Grambling at 3-7. and seven. They're the underdogs coming in. They're the team in front. Third down, and McCray gets the first. So on that speed option to the far side, he decides to keep it. Quincy Mitchell gets the tackle, but not before a first down on the ground. Really exceptional cut that B. Sean McCray made here. You're going to see him press the hole and then bounce it laterally. It draws the defense in for a moment and frees it here right now where McCray, because the defenders are now out of position, it ends up creating a running lane by the way he pressed the hole before bouncing it outside. That's high-level running. Diamond formation, bottom of the screen, and they throw it out there to Braylon Morgan. 
and he stretches ahead for a yard and a half. So the diamond, that sets it up for Morgan, who had a big game a couple of weeks ago, a 60-yard catch. So the SWAC standings, Southern with a victory here would vault to first place, the winners of the SWAC West. They would face unbeaten Jackson State in the SWAC championship game next week. So many things had to fall into place for this opportunity to come together for Southern. To the near sideline, it is complete. Chandler Whitfield. So you mentioned it. Well, let's take a look at this play. Right there on the mesh point, the ball handling in the backfield, but as he extends the plate, look at that grab. That's some special stuff right there from Chandler Whitfield. Well, Anthony, Prairie View A&M, Alcorn State, Texas Southern all had to lose for Southern to have the opportunity this week. They did all lose last week. As Coach Eric Dooley said, he always had that crazy faith <laughs> that it would all go the team's way and they'd have a chance to take care of business this afternoon. The previous ruling of a completed pass is under further review. Let's see if they can win the Swag West. They'll take a look at that last catch. We'll take a look. We'll be back. The Voice is live. Vote in real time to decide which artists will continue on The Voice Mondays and Tuesdays at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on NBC and streaming on Peacock. Caesar Superdome looking at whether a play to the sideline was indeed a catch. After further review, the rule on field has been changed. Incomplete pass. Therefore, it would be third down and nine. Third down and nine. Chandler Whitfield by the sideline. And it's difficult to tell just from our angle there because he's got his white shoes and the white out-of-bounds stripe there, but they did rule that his toes, it was close, but they ruled that his toes were out-of-bounds as he gained possession of the football. So instead of a third and closer to four, it's third and nine. For Southern, and the team that with a win would move on to the SWAC championship game. They're down on the scoreboard. Especially with these wider college hashes, I think it's still a good opportunity. This three by one formation, go ahead and get your quarterback, McCray, on the move, allow him a run pass option. Third and nine. And the pocket steps up, gobbled up. Double team sack back at the 40. Lewis Matthews struts. It's asking a lot of your pass protection. They bring a blitzer from the wide side of the field, and so if protection doesn't hold up, you've got a stationary targeted quarterback asking B. Sean McCray to go into scramble mode. As I said before the snap, it's been more effective throughout the game here where they've called him into movement, gotten the launch point on the go. So after a touchdown for Grambling, they get a stop. They come after this punt. Flag down as Boplant hit the ground hard. They came after it already. Uh, unfortunately, not lying about that. Boplant, that doesn't count. Offense. Five yard penalty remains for You don't want your punters taking hits for no reason. <laughs> You'd like to avoid that if possible. It's a very physical punt that never happened. Yeah, he's banged up too. Robbins Boplant. A big boy, by the way. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm surprised Myron Stewart didn't take the worst of that. Look at those pipes on Bo playing there, man. Listed six foot, a buck ninety five. I don't believe that. Transfer from after him. On a Lewis Johnson program. <laughs> Very catch. Donald Johnson. Grambling football. They have the lead. Looking to go up two scores for the first time. Legacy. It's the path you leave for others to follow. For Jenny Peacock. That's Maurice Washington on the sideline. For more there, Lewis Johnson. Yeah, Chris, you and uh, Ant were bringing uh, his name up earlier, wondering what happened to him. Well, I just talked to him a few moments ago, and Washington uh, sprained his MCL in the right knee in the second quarter. Uh, and so uh, they had a look at it. He just took an ice bag off the red knee, uh, right knee, but you can see he has the crutches. And so obviously Washington is out as Grambling is back on offense. Thanks, Lewis. They 
Disappointing ending for Maurice Washington in his first Bayou Classic, but he did have a couple of nice runs, including this one where he got injured. Uh, tackled by Carter. He might have been off to the races if he was able to slip that. Saw him immediately begin to hobble a bit after that play. One of the players that Hugh Jackson and his scrambling staff were extremely excited about for understandable reasons. Former Nebraska Cornhusker ended up joining the GSU program here this season after a couple of years away from football. Had a couple of nonviolent charges during his time at Nebraska, so he dismissed him from the program. But hopefully he'll be able to get his career started back up here. Well, Chalk is building valiantly for Grambling and continues the feet moving as he tiptoes his way to the 40-yard line. Taking Corian Harris for a ride. Floyd Chalk the fourth. You're able to stick on blocks. You get these small, these diminutive running backs can find creases. I love the vision that we're seeing from Gr Grambling State when they're hitting the holes on the fly. J.R. Waters at the second level with that additional running lane for Floyd Chalk. He's treated that Southern defense like a blackboard. Look at those numbers. And a whistle. Timeout called by Eric Dooley's team. Southern timeouts. Grambling on the move. All right. The reason why your dishes aren't as clean. C and E, and the red carpet starts live for me. Hugh Jackson leading the Grambling State University Tigers, 17 to 14. They got the lead right now on Southern. And there's been an an influx of NFL talent. Hugh Jackson's in the National Football League for almost 20 years. Two different NFL franchises he led as a head coach. The Raiders, the Browns, and now bringing his talents to the HBCU level. It's been, there's been a variety of guys with NFL, deep NFL ties who are now coming to coaching HBCU football. And I mean, you know, just to be frank, Chris, not, not everyone has been pleased about it just because there, there's a community of HBCU coaches who have felt underappreciated over the years. And, you know, Eric Dooley hasn't necessarily said anything negative about it, but he would be an example of a guy, an HBCU lifer as a player and a coach here in the SWAC who has gotten this opportunity as he's worked up towards it over the years. But, you know, Eddie George and Deion Sanders and the success he's had at, at Jackson State. Hugh Jackson now trying to build something with GSU along those lines as well. There, there's a bit of pushback against it, but I do think across the board, all of them have, have tried to be clear that they want the best for everyone coaching HBCU football. And that's been a, a very consistent refrain that all the guys with deep NFL ties have brought to the SWAC and, and other HBCU conferences. The rising tide lifts all boats theory. Right. Mention all the experience that Hugh Jackson has in the NFL. It's funny, one of the things he told us this week is that college football is becoming more and more like the NFL with, you know, some of the NIL and transfer portals like free agency. It's not too dissimilar in the acquisition process of how you, you get these players these days. I mean, you can't buy the kind of publicity you get from some of these guys who care deeply about what they're doing. They're trying to shape young lives, young careers. Oh, that, you can just hear that up here as Carter on the run uh, for Calvez down the near sideline. After hearing the hit, I expected to perhaps see a flag, but well, I don't see it. Maybe wasn't out of bounds quite yet. Calvez extending the play like he's done so effectively throughout the day. Tiptoe on the sidelines here. Yeah, you know Just what? He did. Those yards. He did stay in bounds. He continued to somehow contort his body up the sideline that much further. And he set himself up to get his clock clean by Jordan Carter. Jordan Carter did exactly what he should have done. Okay, but that does set them up for a much shorter fourth down from the 30-yard line. And you can see as Carter looking on, Calvez is yelling at his sideline to tell him to get the right personnel on with just 10 seconds on the play clock. And a Grambling timeout. Grambling State timeout with 3.47 to go in the third before a fourth down and two. We saw earlier in the game there was a, a brief couple of plays there where uh, Corderas Hawkins ended up coming into the game at quarterback for Julian Calvez. And at, at that moment it looked like maybe Calvez's helmet had come off and so they brought Hawkins into the game. And, you know, they ended up having to, to punt the football at the end of that series. But overall, it's been the Julian Calvez show. 
and you've seen what the additional practice time could end up meaning. When you're in the midst of the season, Chris, it is really hard to work fundamentals like ball handling, like the, the passing mechanics that you want to have as a sharp quarterback. It, it does feel like the future is bright when we're looking at what still at times has been an uneven performance for Julian Calvez. It's really impressive things he's done with his versatile offense. Another fourth down in plus territory for Grambling. With Williams, the running back. Four wide set, fourth down. Pressure and sets. Way back at the 40. Ball out late. Derek Williams came flying in. Turnover on downs. Got one of their defensive leaders back in half number two. Derek Williams wasn't available in the first half of this ball game. It's going to come right there from the linebacker position. Had a targeting foul in the previous game. So he was not eligible in the first half, but there because of the movement. And we haven't seen a lot of that from Southern in this game, but they ran a spike stunt with the defensive lineman, Willie Miles. That opened up the B gap, and Derek Williams was able to exploit it. Have that targeting penalty a couple of weeks back against Mississippi Valley. I, I always wonder, wait, what do you do to keep yourself ready for the game for a half? <laughs> I, the, you want to, I'm guessing you're on the sideline, but are you like stretch? Like, that, that, I'd be interested to almost see a feature on yeah. that. What do you do for that half? Will they get on first down? The safety comes closing down. That's Kevin Thomas. Nice one on one tackle by Thomas. Southern's made a couple of big defensive plays when they've needed to in this game. A forced fumble, which directly led to the touchdown drive in the first half. That fourth down stop. Now it's second and nine. McCray, plenty of time, then steps up with the hands around the ankles, tries to get rid of it. Brian Powell provided the pressure. And third down and nine for Southern. Been a big game for Brian Powell. One of their senior edge players on the defense. He's been really effective with his ability to use the inside move. But once he finally gets that penetration into the backfield, it's been the same up and under over and over again when he gets speed in the feet of the offensive tackle and then work towards that inside shoulder. Only three close to the line of scrimmage for Grambling. They only rush three. One of them acting as a spy. So McCray with time steps into it and launches. Snag for a first down in plus territory. Where Chandler you, Whitfield with the catch for Southern. Whether you call him into movement or he does it by himself, the vision of B. Sean McCray is just cleaner once he evacuates the pocket. There you had another edge defender make an inside move. This time it was picked up and blocked. Well done by Whitfield working back downhill towards the football for the grab. Swing pass. Needed to catch that. That one looked like it was a backwards pass to Ligon. Quincy Mitchell recognized it right away and made that a dangerous play for the Jaguars. With everything being so downhill for Grambling State, it does feel like there's an opportunity here if protection can just hold up enough so much of what the Tigers are doing are working at the opposing line of scrimmage I would like to see Southern attempt a deep pass try to set up a one-on-one -on -one matchup the Orlando native McRae back to throw it's too tall looking for August Pete it was drapes by Chris Digre and it's third and 17 the offense just does change significantly when Southern has brought other quarterbacks in, like Bubba McDaniel. But that's that's the one bugaboo for B. Sean McCray. They just haven't been as effective throwing the vertical pass when he's been in at quarterback. When he's in rhythm, like he seems to be getting into now, he can be very sharp and accurate on short and intermediate throws. See how they approach third and 17. A grambling blitz. McCray escapes. Eyes down the field. Sprints to the sideline. That's a great job in pursuit by Joshua Reed to have the speed to match McCray. Reed can run. He's one of the faster linebackers in the SWAC. There have been so many plays made this season where Joshua Reed 
has a running back, a receiver on a jet sweep, a mobile quarterback like B. Sean McCray trying to beat him to the sideline, and no one is able to do it. These two linebackers between Lewis Matthews and Joshua Reed for Grambling State, they work so well together. Joshua Reed will be a part of the HBCU Pigskin Showdown. They'll be on CNBC. It was a flag down by the punter, and we'll check to see whether this is running into or roughing. I'm not sure what case Myron Stewart's trying to make there. I mean, he's it's been multiple plays in a row. He's hit the punter. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Defense, number one. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. I haven't seen a puncher hit the turf as much as Bo Plan in this game in quite some time. There's been a couple of times here where even as yeah. Robins Bo Plan. That's an easy one. Yeah, there's there's really no opposing case to be made for Myron Stewart, who is more than experienced enough to recognize the path you need to take when you're rushing the punt from the edge. You're trying to pick a target area several yards in front of where the path for the punter is going to take him to avoid that. Looks like Bo Plan's okay. But you talked about it in the first half, Anthony, for Grambling. A story to their season has been untimely penalties. And about to get the football back. You commit a personal foul. But those are devastating penalties. Tenth in the swag and penalties this season, and so many of them have been critical, ill-timed, extending drives for opponents, putting themselves behind the chains frequently. So from punting to taking a snap from Grambling's 39, McCray hands it. Liggin, Jimmy's to the 35, ahead to the 34. Under a minute to go in the third. Southern driving to try to take the lead over Grambling State. And it's deflating for the defense. When you start to the sideline, now you have to hurry up and turn around, get back onto the field. Ligon once more. Angles back inside, and he's close to the first down. He'll be about a yard shy. Xavier Lodge. Makes the Grambling State tackle, so for Southern, they do not have to run another play as it's third down and two. They're going to run one anyway, try to keep the wind advantage here. Yeah, the Go wind direction. Going. Yeah. All the sense in the world. It might be really windy <laughs> outside as far as I know. <laughs> 32, McRae lowers his shoulder. Close to the first down from the mark on the far side of the field. Looks like he has it. The ability to capitalize for Southern. We love the tenacity. The quarterback B. Sean McCray burying it up inside. That line is big old line. That was close. <laughs> there he is. McCray shakes his head. Southern on the move. The end of three from the Superdome. The 49th annual Bayou Classic presented by Oikos Bourbon Streets. A lot happening this weekend. A little yes. bit of inclement weather conditions hasn't dampened things much over the few days that we've been in town, checking everything out. This drive for Southern got the benefit of a roughing the puncher penalty on Grambling to keep it alive. So Ligon on the ground on first down, spins his way. For about six, Blake Thomas for Grambling on the tackle. So start of the fourth quarter. Remember, the Bayou Classics all tied up. 24 wins for Southern, 24 wins for Grambling. So the winner of this game takes the series lead. This 49th annual has been a good one. You wonder here, you know, second and, and medium right now, but you wonder what the decision would be for Eric Dooley to get to a fourth down in this area. Would he attempt the field goal? McRae to the outside, angles back in, dies forward. Gets to the 21, two yards shy of the first. And that mesh point, the ball handling that I've referenced throughout the broadcast here, Bishon McRae is certainly more consistent with that than his counterpart on the other sideline, the freshman, Julian Calvez. I would love to see that read option look, the mesh point drawing the defense in 
And then if they can get B. Sean McCray on the move, he would have the run pass option. Mark it at the 22, so it's third down and three. A win for Southern. They'll move on to the SWAC championship game as the West Division winners will take on Jackson State. But they're down by three. On third and three, play clock winding down. And in a game like this, you start to watch those timeouts. You have to use them to avoid penalties. That's not what you want if you're Eric Dooley. Don't miss the biggest and brightest stars in all of HBCU football. Go head to head with the HBCU Pitskin Showdown Saturday, December 17th at 1 Eastern on CNBC and Peacock. A couple of members on Grambling State's defense will be a part of that. Joshua Reed, Brandon Vaughn have accepted their invitations. So it'll be fun to get a chance to see them play in that setting. Joshua Reed's had a great game tonight. His speed, a big part of containing McCray, which is part of the yes. keys here on a third down. After a timeout, third and three. Powell, good making that inside move. Fake the handoff. McCray with a big crease. McCray, touchdown! With the motion from Dyson to the outside, open up the Red Sea, if you will, for Bashawn McCray to dart right through it to put Southern in front. We reference the eyes of the defense. When they see that jet motion, there's just a little bit of hesitation. They're not sure who's got the football. Is it B. Sean McCray? Is it the receiver in that jet motion? That's all McCray needed to be able to take advantage. Extra point, an important one for Joshua Griffin, who's only missed a couple of extra points all season long. Remember, this drive continued with that. Byron Stewart roughing the punter. And then McCray finds the opening for 22 yards out. And the Southern Jaguars are back in front. Shirt sophomore out of Orlando. The quarterback, Bashawn McCray, puts Southern in front. You referenced it, Chris. The, the eye discipline that's necessary for the defense. After this jet motion, freeze it there. You see the effect it has on defenders at multiple levels for Grambling State as their eyes are going towards the receiver in motion. And so now you don't have pursuit from Patrick Marshall. You don't have pursuit from multiple levels of the defense. That opens up the void at the second and third level. And we know B. Sean McCray can make you pay. Remember what Coach Eric Dooley told us this week. He said in his quarterback position, I don't want a game manager. I want a game winner. Winning plays for McCray. But he referenced it. He recognizes he calls the offense in a way that perhaps is maybe beyond the development of B. Sean McCray at the moment. But to see that continued development, he wants to put him at times in difficult positions. Takes the bounce in the end zone. Been a fun game. Each team has had their big plays. Grambling on the ground has been effective. I mean, this offensive line has been sticking on blocks. The ball handling hasn't always been stellar this season for the Tigers, but certainly at many times in the game today, they've been able to make this Southern defense off balance, testing their gap integrity over and over again, running with tenacity. Grambling knows this is their last game of the season. They are laying it all on the line. There's Maurice Washington left the lineup. Floyd Chalk has been the main ball carrier that's really gotten things going. We've seen the improvement in Hugh Jackson's first year. And now on the ground, a Southern defense, one of their toughest outings, stopping the run. I mean, they were number two in the conference coming in in rush defense. Get a torch today on the ground. Chalk and Williams, both running backs in, with Williams in motion. Under center, Calvez. He's pressure from behind, and in front of him, Kane Skirpin. 
Back at the 15, Shelby Gibbons came in with four and a half sacks for the Jaguars. When you're pulling from under center, there's not that immediate separation from the line of scrimmage. And so that penetration on the interior tends to draw younger quarterbacks back deeper and deeper into their drops. Julian Calvez essentially ran himself into that sack for Kelby Gilvins. Second and long, screen bounces to Floyd Chalk. Third down coming up, Lewis Johnson. Now, Chris, sometimes, you know, you have to grow up quick here in the Bayou Classic, and I've been watching the grambling freshman quarterback, Julian Calvez, all game long. And it looks like he's done what his coach has asked him to do, and that's keep his head in the game. But I noticed something late in the third quarter. Remember, guys, when uh, Calvez took that big shot to the jaw? Then the sack and turnover on downs, and he was visibly upset with his coaches. And finally, something hit him, and he came and took his helmet off, talked to all his players, and said, we're going to get this thing done. Let's get it back together. And now Calvez, who does, makes another completion, and a nice pass there, has a chance to see if he can grow up just enough to lead his team to victory here in the Bayou Classic, his very first as a freshman. Thanks, Lewis. That completion to harass, but it is short of the first down. And a punt unit coming on. Yeah, the Bayou Classic makes you grow up fast, and that's the task for Calvez. But right now, Grambling's defense set to head back onto the field with the punting unit on. Consistency is so difficult to, to attain and then to maintain it. You see moments where Julian Calvez certainly looks as sharp and accurate as you want him to look. Then there's other times where he looks like a freshman. Looks like he's sort of figuring things out. Punt by Isles. Whitfield calls it off. It's a good roll for Grambling. Inside the 30. So 11.48 to go in the fourth quarter. Southern coming off of a touchdown drive gets the football back. Wonder as Southern's offense takes the field here. What is the approach? Because they've been able to find ways to get their run game going. But it's been a game Grambling State defense. That Tigers defense has been in attack mode. They've made a lot of plays on the opposing side of the line of scrimmage. We have yet to see even attempted deep passes for Southern's offense. It does seem to me some sort of play action, some sort of run action can set up a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, see if you can pick up a big pass play. Kirkwood, the motion man. First down run. Liggett tries to get the edge. He is blocked by Lewis Matthews. The tackling machine for the Grambling State defense. Hugh Jackson was talking to us about the way that Lewis Matthews and Joshua Reed, they basically challenge each other. They sort of have, have contests to see which one of them can kind of come out of games with more tackles throughout with the tempo that they tend to play at. Matthews approaching that 100 tackle mark for the season. Not this game, that'd be a lot. <laughs> I mean, if you would have said this game, <laughs> it would have been too surprising. Boy, he's been all over the place. McCray scrambles. Reed. Again, you mentioned those two trade. Matthews made the tackle on first, Reed on second down. The familiar refrain throughout the season. It's quality vision from Bishon McCray. Assumed Diada Anderson was working inside the block. McCray was able to cut off of it, but then if you get stuck inside as an edge defender, you've got two linebackers like Matthews and Reed who can always make you right. Whichever gap you guess, it just seems like those two linebackers usually clean it up and make the play. Third and one. McRae off the play action fake. Sidestep throw. He throws it away, but there is a flag down in the backfield. It was drawn by Brian Powell. We'll hear from Jarius Walker, our referee. Oh, offense of 78. Bills decline, play results, and fourth down. Let's check foul. He ends up getting penetration as he's done pretty frequently. And as he's trying to fight off the block, it's one thing to get those hands inside as Eli Fields, but then when the defender's attempting to disengage, you have to try and let him go. 
Well, you told me last year at the Bayou Classic, you have to always be aware of trick plays and for special team shenanigans. <laughs> it's fourth down and you got a feeling one. here? Huh? You have the lead. Inside your own 40, this might be biting off a little more than I think Southern could chew. Rambling has players late coming on, coming off. There's the whistle before the play. So there was an unchecked player for oh, Southern right at the top of the offense, screen. Number 29. Five-yard penalty remains fourth down. But that excitement got Southern out of sorts. <laughs> well, you have to be set at the snap. <laughs> so this isn't exactly set at the snap of the football. There was a lot of battle of the band style gyration happening towards the top of the screen. Could put that in the halftime show. An old version of the human jukebox. <laughs> He was understandably excited. Man. I was excited for him. Punts have been an adventure today for <laughs> Southern. No play gets that one off. Donald Johnson decides to return this one. Gets past the 30. Stays up. Finally brought down. 31-yard line. Grambling State's defense did their job. Got the stop. It's up to the freshman quarterback when you return. Young Rock, Friday on NBC. George Lopez and his daughter Mayan star in NBC's new comedy, Lopez vs. Lopez. Father must know best, but daughter knows better. Lopez vs. Lopez, Friday, 8 Eastern, 7 Central on NBC, and streaming next day on Peacock. Great time had by all the Bayou Classic. Caesar Superdome. Grambling down by four, starting a new possession. With the freshman Galvez pressured again and sacked once more. Cameron Peterson brings him down this time for a big loss. Holding the ball. We haven't seen Julian Calvez do that as frequently in the game today. But here, Peterson just continues to work the edge, not giving up on trying to turn the corner. Quarterback Calvez holds the football long enough for Cameron Peterson to get home. It's really a fun scenario. I mean, both coaches say you come to Southern or you come to Grambling to play in this game, the Bayou Classic. You have a freshman quarterback with the team down, needing a touchdown in the fourth quarter. Fun setup. How does Calvez approach it? This time on the ground and picks up the lost yardage from the sack and maybe a couple extra to make it a more manageable third down. Perhaps a couple of extra bumps and bruises as well Over towards the sideline. And fast flowing and pursuing Southern defense. Now third and long here. The Southern defense that came into the game really effective on third down. The enhanced mobility of Julian Calvez and his decisiveness in when and how to run has really at least given Grambling State more of an opportunity on third down today than they've displayed at times this season. How you approach this third down? I think safely, to be honest with you. Perhaps even a screen pass. Galvez. Five step drop. Flicks the wrist. Deep down the middle. It floats. And it's intercepted. Christian Davis with the pick. There is a flag down back near midfield. But Southern gets the interception and will check the flag. Davis doesn't look too happy. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number seven. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic, first down. And actually 17, Kristen Davis, but he's matched up one-on-one -on -one with Lyndon Rash. Rash hasn't been as big a part of a passing attack here in the second Correction. half as he was number 17. We did correct that already, sir, but thank you. You are correct. But now that moves the chains for GSU with that attack pass. That was a big part of where they haven't been. Both teams have been ineffective throwing the deep ball throughout the season here. Grambling has at least been able to go into attack mode and try to lengthen the coverage more frequently. Galvez, roll out, beam, hurdles, whoa! To pick up the first down, the UNLV transfer, Noah Bean, with the highlights of the afternoon. 
It's becoming so frequent in the sport these days as defenders look to go low against bigger offensive players. Saw them move the pocket. And get the ball to Noah Bean. As he turns up field, immediately goes airborne over the top of Kristen Davis. Davis has been busy on this drive. Galvez. Oh, he's hit. The ball out and scooped up. Jordan Cutter strides and scores. Room on the field. It. The results of the play, touchdown, after the play, personal foul, number 71, return team. The 15 yard, 15 yard building will be enforced on the kickoff. Jordan Carter. To the house. Back there playing the deep safety position. He'll eventually work his way towards the box. As the pocket begins to collapse around Julian Calvez, this isn't a blitz from the safety, but the football is there and available to Jordan Carter, who's already had a pick six earlier this season. This defense for Southern has been so opportunistic. They've been able to start to get a bead on the pocket. It's one of the reasons I advise a little bit of caution from Grambling State's perspective with the drop back passing game. That's the second time we've seen the ball come out of Calvez's hands before he was even hit. He was hit hard, but that ball was out before the contact. It's happened multiple times this game. It's happened several times earlier in the season. The insecurity of the ball handling in the backfield rears its head again for GSU. Jaguars defense now their sixth defensive touchdown of the year. First in the SWAC, number two overall in the FCS. And that's Calvez. Again, is that like hand size? Is like what, what's causing the, the ball to just slip the hand? And again, it's usually with pressure, so it's not without some kind of cause from the defense. Right. But that's multiple times now in this game, and you mentioned this season for him. Some of the inconsistency, the main spots that the inconsistency shows up for Julian Calvez. One is the example we just saw right there, with just the, the ball coming out of his hands at ill time moments where he hasn't actually been collisioned by a defender yet. Also, the accuracy on the move. He's mobile enough to run and throw while he's on the move, but sometimes the ball sails on him, he throws it into the dirt. But then there are other moments where you see how cool, calm, and collected he is. It's just about attaining and maintaining consistency because the ability is most certainly there. First time in the game today, we have a multi-score lead, and it's here in the fourth quarter. But now with the remaining time, Grambling State, would imagine, will have to go more into attack mode on offense. Penalty on Priestley is why this kickoff is from midfield. That's right through the end zone. So Southern, now up by 11. Remember, Southern with a win in this game. Will take on Jackson State in the SWAC championship game as the West Division winners. In reference to the way that Eric Dooley was confident, had faith that his team would get this opportunity today based off the three key teams that they needed to lose last weekend while they were off on a bye preparing for the Bayou Classic. All three of those teams lose last weekend. Now Southern had this opportunity. I spoke to Terrence Graves on the field before the game today, who was on the opposing sideline as the interim head coach for Grambling State. Terrence Graves told me exactly the same thing. He was advising the players for all the time he's been around this matchup that the game would mean something. Always has that intensity. It's nearly picked. Almost through the hands of Glenn Brown the third. So Calvez, one play after losing it on a fumble, almost gives it away again. 
the relief pass, the tunnel screen, things where you can get the football out of your quarterback's hands quickly and in rhythm, I'd say that would be advisable for where GSU is at right now. Oh, it's second down. It's a run. Williams crawls to the 29. Jordan Monroe, the southern tackle, third down for Grambling. And we've detailed throughout the second half of the game here. They've certainly picked up a fair amount of explosive run plays. Here on third and long. Pass protection, especially even though Southern doesn't need to blitz to be able to get home. I would be curious to see whether or not they throw that wrinkle at the Grambling State pass protection. One of the pa best pass rushes can get after Galvez. Step far to escape, but can't get rid of the defense on that one. Jalen Campbell finally found him. There is a flag down in the area of holding. But Southern's defense oh, comes up big. Offense, over 55. Builds the prime. Play results. Still down. They haven't needed much of it, but from the second level, they bring one of their best linebackers who's now active in the second half of the game. Bring him into the A-gap. He's pressing the pocket against the running back, Chance Williams. That forces Julian Calvez out of the pocket. And then the pursuit for the Jaguars, able to get home from there. Southern, their recipe, they get that lead, they come in with their pressure. Isles Butts, not a great one, but takes a fortunate roll inside the 40. Southern with the lead in control of the Bayou Classic. More truck owners are switching to Ram. On the last Grambling punt, Southern's Philip Thomas got banged up and a stretcher out for him, and that's the concern back near the 10 yard line. Senior out of Atlanta. See 13 on the left side of your screen. Very difficult to discern exactly what may have happened from there. Certainly several different bodies he collides with before ending up on the turf. Check on Philip Thomas. We'll be back from the Caesar Superdome. Boycos, triples, and red carpet starts live for me. Still attending to Philip Thomas for Southern. Senior from Atlanta, Georgia. It was a punt for Grambling. And Philip Thomas has been down for over five minutes. Medical staff. I'll bring him into the stretcher. And we hope for the best for Philip Thomas. And understand, understandably so. You saw his entire team and his coaching staff gather around each other. Positive thoughts for Philip Thomas as he was being attended to by the medical staff. Great to see a thumbs up right there from Thomas. Bayou Classics is about a lot of things. Football, food, bands, tradition, but community. Perhaps at the top of the list. And see the support for Southern and Grambling not too far behind looking right. on and hoping for the best. So many of these guys grew up together, played together in the Louisiana area through high school, in some cases even through college, getting here to this point. As much as this is a rivalry, there's a 
a brotherhood that's baked into this rivalry between the Jaguars and the Tigers. We send our best to Philip Thomas. One more look at what happened. So it's really tough to tell. And certainly immediately in pain and the medical staff very quickly came to his aid and intended to him. I hope all the best to Philip Thomas. Brought up how a lot of these players played with against each other throughout their childhood. Not only familiarity on the field, on the sidelines too. A lot of coaches coach with each other, coach against each other. A lot of Grambling players on Southern staff, a lot of Southern players on Grambling staff. Back to football on a first down run for Southern. So the task here with an 11 point lead over six minutes left. Moving the football and trying to secure the 49th Bayou Classic and the take a lead in the head to head series. We have the coaches with grambling ties on Southern side of things. We a lot of players, including you know, Eric Dooley, who played at grambling for Eddie Robinson, was the offensive coordinator. For four seasons, he's the head coach now at Southern. McCray on the keeper gets to the 45, so it'll be third down and about four for Southern. And Grambling could absolutely use a stop right now. You see where the the tempo that Southern at times had mixed in, going some hurry up. We've seen them now begin to milk the clock as they've gotten this multi-score lead in the fourth quarter. Referencing some of the ties on both sidelines talked a bit earlier about Terrence Graves now the special teams coordinator back at Southern under Eric Dooley He was as we mentioned a little bit earlier in the show the interim head coach for Grambling State last season He's been on both these sidelines as a special teams coordinator and interim HC. We got the ice shower yeah. in the last game on the Grambling sideline third down run won't get there Handful of Grambling Tigers on defense make the stop on Carl Ligon and we'll see how Southern approaches it. Their offense, as of now, staying on the field. And now the punt unit coming on. In the midst of a very physical day from the Alcorn State transfer, Roman's bow plan. Hunter's been through it all. Transfer from Alcorn. Junior from Florida. Hits it off. It's a rocket. And dies. <laughs> Inside the five. Down by Dyson and couldn't have done it any better for Bo Plan. Remember, he had an impressive punt earlier on in this game where the ball hit the turf, picked it up, ran, got the punt through. This time much more traditional, but just as effective. Tough to imagine he was going to outdo himself from that initial punt you referenced earlier. Teammates able to doubt it inside the five. And at a certain point, you're a little bit lonely as the punter. Once you do your job, repeat the task of placing the football, they still have to doubt it for you. Well executed special team led by Terrence Graves. So it's back on the shoulders of Calvez. This time from his own five. Empty set. Rush of four. Roll out. Delivers. Caught. On the sideline by Chance Williams, the running back. He's been used as a receiver at times. Gains nine. Throwing windows. When they declare, when you anticipate them, how you deliver the football into, through them. It's one of the things that young quarterbacks, it takes a fluidity to the way you're seeing coverage. That's why the passing attack for Grambling is so exterior, so much towards the hash marks and the numbers, because you can see that more cleanly. On second and one, Rash wide open, dances by the 30-yard line, clip down. It was Rodney Johnson Jr. in coverage, and Grambling has to work with tempo here, down two scores, 325 left. Positive sign for GSU, we're now that pass 
attacking the hash marks and on the interior. That's been open to them several times. Julian Calvin is able to take advantage. Going to need a big play at some point. See if Calvez can deliver it here. Roll out. Gets rid of it. High and picks. Christian Davis. This time it counts. And Davis with the exclamation point for Southern. Another example of an open wide receiver as Julian Calvez is on the move. And an opportunity to feed it to Lyndon Rast. Ball sails on him like we've been talking about throughout this show. There's times where it looks clean, times where it looks accurate, times where it looks like that. And this Southern defense, they don't only take the football away, they don't only press at your quarterback. When they get the rock in their hands, they're looking to score. He had the interception earlier on that was called back with a face mask. That time, nothing on the field except six points for Southern. Extra point, no good. Stays in a 17-point game. There was still man coverage. If they ran there, it's more of an off man. He had eyes on the quarterback the entire way. Closing in on a spot in the SWAT championship game. Of course, she had Prairie View AM looking on closely. If Southern dropped this game, it would be them taking on Jackson State. Instead, it looks like Southern. And this looks like CJ Russell on the return, wrapped up and brought down deep in their own territory for Grambling to begin this drive down 17 with 252 left. Very happy Jaguars fans. Just a couple of weeks back, looked like this was going to be a season that had a winning record, that had some positivity to it, but that would end here on the field at the Superdome. Now all the signs pointing towards Southern University playing again next week. And this was not easy by the, the least. You look at the score, if it stands 34-17, right. uh, Southern dominated the game that absolutely not the case but a strong fourth quarter some defensive plays to help look like close the door Edward Smith on first down slithers to about the 18 learning opportunity for Julian Calvez for a lot of his young teammates dozens of freshmen many of them true freshmen on the field today have played significant roles for Grambling State throughout this season. These are still critical reps for them. Rash on the comeback. Brought down at the 30. So if the score holds, it'd be Southern. One of the most improbable ways. Again, they needed three separate games to go their way last week to have this chance. The message for the Jaguars as they were watching last week's action, Eric Dooley said he had all the TV set up. He wasn't, <laughs> wasn't taking any chances of not watching the game. The TVs, was. the computers, you name it. If there was a game to be watched, he was taking them all in. But the message was crazy faith. They were texting each other, the players back and forth. Corey Robinson was telling us that was the message that the team had really throughout last week. Crazy faith. We're not in action. But whatever needs to happen will take care of itself. Well, it did 
to set up this game for Southern. All they needed to do was get past their arch rival, the Grambling State Tigers. The Bayou Classic, where it's famous for anything can happen. Grambling got off to the great start. Southern, second half. Excellent. Galdez on second down. Again, a little bit too much on it. Over the head of Smith. You think about Eric Dooley, the fact that he played his college football at Grambling State. Coached there as an assistant. Coached as an assistant at Southern. So he got to learn under not only the great Eddie Robinson in his time during his playing career, got to study under Pete Richardson with his first full-time coaching opportunity as well. Now this opportunity to coach his team yet again to a SWAC title, but not only as he did for Prairie View A&M, but now takes Southern, one of the greatest of all time, Pete Richardson. He helped him win multiple black college national championships. Smith picks up the first down, but there's a couple of flags back by the quarterback. So he's got the collar pop there, by the way. You referenced the, he the style. play, the style. completed pass for a third down. After the play, personal foul, number 71, Grambling. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run, third down. I think that's the second personal foul on Priestley. If that's the case, he'd be done. The defender, Zach Yassine. Plants his quarterback on the ground. Priestley, I'm not sure. I mean, I understand you don't want your quarterback to get hit, but one hit was within the rules. Another hit was outside the rules. And Priestley did move to the sideline. They didn't announce it as such. Didn't want to make him feel bad in the stadium, but we're here on national television. Let everyone know what happened. There's that screen, but the timing's been off on the screens all game long for Grambling. Goes through the hands of Chalk. And we sort of categorize things like screen passes as sort of just these easy completions, free yards. But there is, to your point, there's timing to it, there's rhythm, there's spacing that has to be synchronized. And just with all the youth on this Tigers offense, that's just one aspect of where we tend to see them just be inconsistent over and over again. There's a lot they do on offense. The QB's under center, the QB's in the gun, they run all kinds of motions, sweeps, and screens, and everything else. A lot to consume. Ooh, that one again, almost picks. Rodney Johnson, a couple of times in this game, has almost had an interception. That time, stepping in front of Lyndon Rash. I mean, think about all the quarterbacks that Hugh Jackson has coached in his career. And then you're a freshman at Grambling, and you get the chance to Work with a guy who's, you know, whether at the college level, Matt Liner or Carson Palmer, NFL Carson Palmer as well. Now you're getting that kind of instruction at this level. For a while, they six in at school, but probably coach pretty hard as well, so <laughs> might not feel like it's cool. Third down. Caldez, again it is he throws, and the ball's out, rolled a fumble. Oh, big pack up by Chalk. Might have ripped it away from a Jaguar. Flag down, another flag. It's, it starts to get a little sloppy. Late in the fourth. Well, Cody Hornsby, his helmet came off. He looked like he continued to play a little bit. But, you know, play was still active, but you're, you're supposed to shut yourself down when your helmet comes off during the snap. Tigers may be in danger of running out of offensive linemen pretty soon. Hornsby does only have to leave the game for one play. He felt the opponent ripped his helmet off. That was what he was rather upset about. And then two more flags at about this point. So a lot to sort out. Personal foul. Blind side block. Offense, number one. The 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the spot of foul. Remains third down. J.R. Waters. Back in this game. He suffered an injury a couple of weeks back against Pine Bluff, so good to see him back. Hugh Jackson, just his first taste of the Bayou Classic. 
Perhaps a bit of a bitter one. First half, Grambling State looks strong. Got away a bit in the fourth quarter. As we referenced a couple of times here, they, they were getting to a stretch where Grambling State was beginning to play some of their best football of the season, back-to-back -back games. And Fred McNair has led a really good Alcorn State squad for several seasons, came up with a win against them. A lot of dancing and moving for Chalk. And brings up fourth down. Let that clock wind a little bit. Let's think of a stretch of games that GSU had there. They played Florida a and extremely tough, led by Willie Simmons, who they should have been in the FCS playoffs. Myself and a number of other people believe that. Beat Alcorn, beat Arkansas Pine Bluff. There it is. Eric Dooley getting the ice shower. Doesn't look too pleased about it, though. I, you know, he's a fashion guy. <laughs> Doesn't want to get that messed anywhere near messed up. Uh, there you go. There's a smile. Uh, Southern celebrates. And he was a hire that checked all the boxes for Southern. A swag lifer. Now he checks the box of the winner of the Bayou Classic as Southern's coach. It's the Jaguars. 34-17, knocking off Grambling State, and Southern will play in the SWAC championship game. A New Orleans native. Born and raised in this area. As a player, assistant coach, and head coach. His first year. So first year leading the way at quarterback for Bashawn McCray. Stellar in the second half. New Jackson will have more cracks at it. And Southern now has the head-to-head -head in the Bayou Classic 25-24. Setting up for what should be a brilliant 50th Bayou Classic next season. There's the trophy. At the MVP awarded as well. Let's go downstairs for Corey Robinson. Coach Dooley, congratulations. The series is no longer tied. To do this in your hometown as the first time of the head coach, how would you describe this feeling? You know, the only thing I just always tell folks, but God, just uh, keep trusting in. Those young men work hard, extremely hard. I'm speechless. I'm speechless. When we spoke at halftime, you told me, we, just, we know it's at stake, we just have to finish. How are you able to finish today as a team? Well, you know, I thought our defense came on strong at the end. Uh, the offense got a chance to move the ball and put the ball in the end zone. But at the end of the day, I thought we played well as a, as a, as a team. You know, I, I always preach three phases, uh, special team offensively and defensively, and I thought those guys did a great job. We know it wasn't going to be easy. Uh, you're talking about a, a big-time rivalry right here in Grambling, and those guys have uh, been playing well as well. So we knew it was going to be tough for us, but our guys fought for 60 minutes. The defense, as you mentioned, unstoppable. Sacks, a consistent pressure, scoop and score, a pick six. Uh, how were you able to put them in a position to be successful today? I, you know, our defensive staff did a great job. Coach Miller got those guys rolling and playing some good football. So uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with it, but that's what I expect because that's what those guys have been doing all year long. Next up, SWAC Championship, a rematch against Jackson State. How will you prepare the guys for such a big moment? I never look in the rearview mirror. We just got to look what's ahead of us. We got the opportunity uh, to represent the West in the SWAC championship game. Uh, we know it's not going to be an easy battle. I think they got some great teams in this conference. So uh, facing Jackson, who haven't lost a game this year here, uh, we got our challenges, but we'll be prepared and ready. Best of luck to you. Congratulations, Coach. Lewis? All right, thanks very much. Well, the Southern Jaguars are definitely celebrating, and Michelle McCray doesn't want to do the interview by himself. He wants his entire offensive line here. First of all, congratulations in just a moment here. What does it mean to you? It means a lot. I mean, we a lot was riding on it. 
a lot. Thank God. I want to thank the O line, my O line. They did beautiful today. Like, we can't do no. I can't ask for nothing more. I can't. I can't. Yeah, happy birthday to Kyrie Mama. Can you just describe what it was like to have the table set perfectly for you? The teams that needed to lose did. You know, when you came into this game, if you won, you'd be headed to the SWAC championship. What was it like to take the field knowing you had this opportunity? It mean a lot. I knew it was a big game. Like Coach Julie gets said, it's the next game. But we, we preached all on our bye week last week. We knew we knew it could happen, so we just stayed prepared. So when the moment came, it wasn't really a shock to us. There's so much emotion in this game, Bishan, and as you ride the ups and downs of the waves that happen, how did you manage yourself and the rest of this team to try and get to this moment here where you're victorious? Just don't make the moment too big. We know what's riding. We know what we had to do. All right. And now you know what's next. The SWAC championships against Jackson State. What are your thoughts on that? It's a big game because it's the next game, but we're going to be prepared. How did Bishan do the game, guys? Good? Uh, great. Marvelous, they said. Bishan, congratulations to you and your team. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Lewis. Marvelous job indeed. McCray and the squad get to celebrate. Big second half. Yeah, we'll see you in Jackson. SWAC West Division champs. They'll take on Jackson State in the SWAC Championship game. Winners of the Bayou Classic trophy presentation next. At Progressive, we love your families. Southern Jaguars, winners of the 49th Bayou Classic, presented by Oikos. Let's go to Michael Smith. Hey, guys, listen. I think about this journey for Eric Dooley, and you're talking about a guy that in 1997, he was coaching middle school. He was teaching at middle school, McMain, here in New Orleans. This is a kid from Carrollton, this, the Carrollton area of this city. He got a job as a part-time running backs coach, and he kept his job at McMahon, so he was commuting, coaching at Southern while he was still coaching and teaching at McMahon. That's the kind of dedication he had and that kind of drive, no pun intended. And that journey, coaching at Grambling, coaching, of course, at Southern under Pete Richardson, now hoisting the trophy for the Bayou Classic. It's just a, such a full circle moment for a kid, like I said, from Carrollton, a New Orleans kid, now get an opportunity to compete for the SWAC championship. Just such a great story. Back to you guys. Excellent story indeed. It's a storybook for the New Orleans native. Getting ready to start the trophy presentation down on the field. Southern, those smiles tell it all. They don't need a presentation to, to grab. They, 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 they want at it now. <laughs> Like a kid with candy. The most oh. valuable player for Southern University is quarterback number 11, Bashan McCray. Presented by Shani Hostin, AARP Vice President, Audience Strategy, Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. gentlemen this year to present the trophy to the winner of the 49th annual Bayou Classic is our presenting sponsor Procter & Gamble representative Damon Jones as well as our presenting sponsor of the Bayou Classic trophy AE Touch Technologies representatives Adam Crapple and Mayat Latham congratulations Southern Jaguars
So Eric Dooley and the Southern Jaguar is going to get a chance to celebrate as winners of the Bayou Classic. They do it with some adversity in the first half, but it really shows the character of this team and the character of Coach Dooley to be able to break through a win. No surprise. They got quite a test from Grambling State on the field today. That's what rivalry weekend is about. You're going to face one of these opponents within your region that you have to make sure you bring your best. Both teams did that today. Well-earned victory from Southern. They win the 49th Bayou Classic, take the lead in the series, and have a meeting with Jackson State in the SWAC championship game. Southern gets the win over Grambling State, 34-17. Thanks so much for watching the 49th Annual Bayou Classic, presented by Oikos. HBUC, HBCU football action continues with the HBCU Pigskin Showdown. That's Saturday, December 17th, 1 Eastern on CNBC and Peacock. For Michael Smith, Anthony Heron, Lewis Johnson, Corey Robinson, I'm Chris Lewis. Farewell from the Superdome. The Eagles have been off the charts all season. So if you're looking to buy low, buy, buy, buy. you're too late. Everyone's all in, but the Packers are in town, led by a QB that's never lost in Philly, and they're looking to rally big time. Packers, Eagles, it's a big money matchup made for Sunday night on NBC and Peacock. Come on, man, this is my first birthday with Chad.